Hello, Coolman Teacher Nine here. Angel Ren eighty nine. And we're gonna talk about the new Smash Brothers because we've so, well after watching that announcement trailer at the end of the direct, we've been really excited, like everyone else. Yeah. We wanted to do this earlier, but things did not align until right now. I mean, technically they did, but we spent a whole day talking and forgetting to do a video. Yes. We got very, very distracted. But now we're not. So now we're going to do the video on this. So, of course, I think one of the biggest things to talk about with this is whether it's going to be an, an entirely new game or a port. And I've, I've seen arguments for both sides, and both <clears> sides <throat> do make some good points, but some of them, not so much. Well, and I, I really don't think it's going to be a hard line either one or either I don't know why people are trying to make it out to be, you know, one or the other. Because I think it's going to be, because it's not going to be a Super Smash Bros. Wii U Deluxe, and it's not going to be an entirely new game because it's it hasn't been long enough for them to make a new game Way completely from scratch because you have these nearly de like almost a decade long waits between smashes with like melee and brawl and then brawl and Wii U because you had well and 64 to melee yeah well, yeah so <clears throat> you know I don't really I really don't think that they would have made a new game because this like like you and I were actually talking about this last night how they have they would have to have been developing this before the release of Smash Brothers Wii U. Or at the very least, probably starting the moment that game was released in 2014. Yeah, but then they were also working on the DLC. And because I, I just I just don't think it really lines up that it would be an entirely new game. Because I what I think, what I really think of it is that it's going to be like it's going to take the base of the Wii U. Like they're going they're essentially it's going to be Port, but a port, but also a new game. Yeah, so I think they're going to take the engine of the Wii U version. They're going to enhance it, you know, put it on Switch, make it run properly. Basically, rather than building a game from the ground up, you take it from the foundation of something else. Right, and that way you would have all the stages, all the characters, all the move sets, all the features, and all that stuff. And you from... just touch it up. Yeah, you touch it up. So. You know, then you just build on top of that, and you would, and you'd have all of that stuff already done. Then all you need to do is add to it. Like and then suddenly, it would make a whole, it would make a lot of sense if you had that much time between just. I mean, the DLC they finally stopped doing it. I think so, Bayonetta and Corrin came out 2016, like yeah, a I year so. after they started doing all the DLC, because the DLC was started in 2015. Yeah. So if it's been like two years since they started the DLC, that would give them still plenty of time then. And hello, dog. Yeah, we give them plenty of time to work on it. And because we know that, you know, when it comes to making Brawl on the Wii U and the 3DS version, having to make everything from the ground up would take a while. So I would, th I would think it'd just be, um, just to be efficient, that they would just have all of the, it would have all the base stuff done, and you would just enhance it because the engine they had for the Wii U version was fantastic, and it ran perfectly fine. They've done nothing but a lot of games, yeah. like Bayonet Two. They've just cleaned up for the Switch and uh, Mario Kart Eight. Um, yeah, uh, and Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. They, like the games are Donkey essentially Kong. the same Wii U games, just cleaned up a bit. But they know that they can't just port the Wii U version, but. There, I, I think, mean, and it looks like HAL Laboratories is helping because it said copyright HAL Laboratories. Yeah. So the, it's all, I really think that they're going to go all out with it because I, I think for all intents and purposes, this will be, the Smash Brothers 4 Switch will be Smash 5. Like, it's not going to be Smash 4.5, it's going to just be Smash 5 built on the groundwork of the Wii U version. So it'll technically be a port, but also technically a new game because it'll probably have everything from the old game, but then built mm -hmm. up. With new st content, like right. so, basically instead of like, instead of like um, Marvel vs. Capcom three, then six months later, here's Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom three, which is essentially a new version of the same game you previously played. They're just like, hey, instead of DLC, we'll just make a game. Granted, yeah. they still probably could do more DLC. Yeah, and I wouldn't doubt it if they if they were going to do more DLC again, just because you know. <laughs> but we know Nintendo likes to make a complete game first before they do DLC. Oh yeah, like, you know, Smash Brothers Wii U, even with all the DLC that that had. It was a know. complete roster first. Yeah. We got a very excited dog. Yeah, yeah because and we know that they were even planning on Ryu and Roy and stuff, but they simply just hadn't made the characters yet. But so yeah, I mean, I I think like they're they're they were being very Nintendo's being very smart with the Switch, so I think that they they understand that you know, you can't just make everything this from the ground up completely in a short amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
So, yeah. I mean, so, if doing that, I think going that, when it comes to what they're going to keep, I think it's going to be pretty much most everything from the Wii U version. No, I sadly don't think we'll have a Miiverse stage. Unless they find yeah. a way around it. Which, uh, unless they announce the Miiverse with their I online. The to come back. I love, I lo the I love Miiverse. Miiverse but... And I loved the Miiverse stage. Yeah, One I... of our favorite hits on jokes. The Captain Falcon with the spikes and nipples of the Oh, gosh. <laughs> Saw it oh, on dear. It was the greatest night ever when we were playing Smash Brothers. We were laughing so hard we were in tears. The Smash, you know, the Wii Miiverse stage used to come back. But yeah, I, mean, I think in terms of the roster, like everyone's trying to speculate that they're going to slash the roster. No, no, no. I, I think that, especially if they're being built it's up It's such a good roster. Yeah. It's like, I think they're going to keep the roster and they're going to add characters. Because we know they're going to add characters from the Inklings. But, you know, I think I don't think they're going to cut people. A lot of people think that they're, oh, they're going to cut Ryu, they're going to cut Cloud, they're going to cut why? Bayonetta. I'm like, why? They're popular. And on top of that, it's people are acting like there's this big drama with all the companies. And I'm like, you, I don't know, it just seems no. a, lot, a lot more Especially of the, because of the way the Switch is now. Every gaming company wants to get on the Switch. You're right, and then Square Enix has been pushing. I mean, Octopath Traveler is exclusive to the Switch, and that's getting a big push. Capcom's always had friendly relationships with Nintendo. Yeah, Capcom has multiple characters in Smash Brothers now with and Wii U multiple and... games on Nintendo stuff. So, right, and like the, so, why would shoot, they ever they're bringing be over the 30th anniversary Street Fighter collection? I know, and recently we got Street Fighter 2 HD on the Switch. Right. Right, so, you know... I, We're going to get the newest Mega Man game also on the Right, Switch. and even with Konami, um, you know, we were, oh no, we'll talk about that later when it comes to that, but, but you know, I, I think really they're going to keep all the characters and then they're just going to add some more. Or And I, I think they might make some changes mm -hmm. with characters, maybe like Lucina might get a bit of a change up or stuff, but I mean, I think... I think the They might tweak some of them, too. Yeah, because we know that um, Breath of the Wild Link is going to be the design for Link in the game. You know, they'll, he'll probably have multiple outfits uh, from that you can select through. But Hopefully, his yeah. normal classic look, because I love the green hat. It's why I never play as actually a champion Link. I always put him in his green tunic. Yeah. It's just not Link without the, the oversized sock hat and the green outfit. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think... I mean, all the clone characters are going to come back, I think. Which is probably with some tweaking. Yeah. The only, I mean, I think the one that's not going to be tweaked at all is Dr. Mario. Because, because he it, plays like Melee Mario. Yeah, and that, that's the funniest it. thing. It's like I saw people like, well, they're definitely going to cut Dr. Mario. I'm like, well, they made a big deal about bringing him back. Like, why would they bring him back? And they go, okay, now we're going to get rid of him. Like, it's like. Oh, a, but we did say one thing that they would update is instead of Mario having Flood as a down he's probably going to have Cappy. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's this. As probably as a downbeat or something. Like, There's, maybe he could... Maybe he'll throw it out, and he'll probably, if you could hold down the button, he'll probably, like, stay out there. And he can probably jump on it. Yeah. Which, that would be cool way and for honestly, recovery. And honestly, and to be perfectly... And it would also work as a reflection attack, so... Yeah, it could work it as a reflector in the similar way whenever he threw the, the cape. Yeah, so I think, I honestly, if they do that, I think that functionally would be better than the Flood, because I never liked the Flood. As much as I love Super Mario Sunshine, mm -hmm. the move was pretty weak, and, I, and honestly, Flood deserved better. What they should have done is change Mario's up B to make it Flood. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I mean, you could have done an entire move set around the Flood, but... But yeah, I mean, I, I, that's what I'm hoping that they'll change. But yeah, I think, I think that's, I think the tweaks will be minor. I mean, I, I think that they're going to keep the custom moves. Like, I, I, everyone loved the custom moves, and if you didn't really like some of the move sets, particularly with the clone characters, like what when I did with Lucina, is I just changed a couple of the moves, like her, her um, stab thing that she has. Well, ironically, I, I kept Lucina's move set the same, and I changed up Mars moves. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, but I just I just wanted to do a little bit of different from Marth, so I just changed it to the, like the dash, and I changed the up B, and but in it, that makes them feel drastically different. So I think that they'll keep the uh, custom moves, but the only thing I want them to do is I I pr either want them to make it really easy to unlock them, or have them already unlocked from the start. Like I don't think it's fun though unlocking the characters. Well, like, it, I it, love it, it was fun, but the problem with the Wii U and the 3DS version was that unlocking the custom moves. Well, yeah, the custom was a moves was a, was a little bit of a pain, but I mean, the characters should always be easy to unlock. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Cause, characters. Because that's always fun to unlock. Like, here's another new character, here's another new character. Like, and it's always fun to make your roster grow. Like, I like that. And I like that Nintendo does that rather than hiding all of these characters behind DLC. <clears throat> Capcom. Yeah, I, and I do hope that this time around that they don't reveal all of the new characters. 
I don't want them to reveal everything. Like yeah, they, the whole roster. I would think it would be cool if some of it is a surprise, kind of like how it was way back when before you knew about stuff. Like when you imagine you're a kid and you're playing Melee, so you didn't know what the full roster was because you didn't. The not many people always use the internet. And then you're sitting there, and then you're playing, and then suddenly you unlock all these new characters, and you're, like, amazed. Well, and I remember, like... Like Ganondorf, like, wow! I mean, I remember when I was playing it as a kid, and then you get the unlock for, like, um, Dr. Mario. No, Dr. And, Mario, yeah. And I was just suddenly like, what in the Dr. Mario did it becoming one of my mains? Which is why I was so pumped to have Dr. Mario back, that I could be evil Dr. Mario again. <laughs> His evil Dr. Mario, an Italian man who happens to speak German. No, I actually do hope that they that they um, that they bring back Smash Run. Smash Run was a lot of fun. It kind of reminded me of Adventure Mode a little bit. Yeah, a bit of that. And or bring back Adventure Mode. That'd be so great. Okay. Yeah. yeah or I, Subspace Emissary again, or just like some kind of story mode because that was I, so fun. Oh, I love Subspace Emissary, even though it didn't have as much replayability as like the Adventure Mode because that was shorter. I do hope that they... It's just fun seeing, even though none of the characters talked, it was fun seeing all these characters interact. Yeah, and in that big story where you have that big dramatic plot line involving Rob being the... Your cat just knocked over the trash can. <laughs> She's fine. <laughs> this is fine. Yeah, I mean, I do, I do, I really would love it if they brought back some kind of adventure mode. And I, I really, I feel like they would, because it was such an outcry when the Wii U version came out, and it didn't have any story mode. Well, yeah, or adventure mode. Granted, people did love Smash Run in the 3DS, so that was like a nice little I would love it if they made like an HD version of Smash Run for this, because I played Smash Run Imagine if that, like, was all but in, like, the Wii U graphics. Oh, that would be beautiful. It would be great. Is set on the Switch, so it's even more cleaned up. Right. And then you can still have it portable on, you know, in or console. But I really I really would love to see a story mode, even if it's not as long and elaborate as Subspace Emissary. Because like, if they had decided to work on this from the beginning, then they would have had several years to do all of the cutscenes and all the levels and stuff. Yeah. Which I think, you know, particularly with Sakurai, because we know that Sakurai is involved in this, and that's why I know this is going to be a new game. Because a new game, but slightly a port, because yeah. of Sakurai needs a break. If he was working on this game at the same time as the other game, the poor man would be dead. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not overwork poor Sakurai here. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I would... Because I know one of the things he always said about the Wii U version is that the main reason why they didn't have a subspace emissary or a story mode was because it got leaked online. But I don't ever remember that getting leaked online for Brawl. Well, but uh, the other problem was, was because then people just keep uploading the cutscenes on the internet anyway later on was his problem with it. And I'm like... Well, that's well, going to happen anyway. People do that anyway with <clears throat> all video games. You might as well you not have see. any cutscenes in any video game ever if they're going to put it online. Like, But it's like... But and but we know that they've been working on this in secret for a while because I think, I think he even tweeted that he says that he's secretly been working with this. I don't think he's like the director... I don't think he's, like, super in charge. Which but is I, probably why he had HAL Laboratories helping him. Yeah, so I, what I think he is is he's supervising it so that he's not directly involved because that poor man needs a rest. Which would also be cool because, I mean, with HAL Laboratories, that does make me hopeful we get some kind of adventure mode because the last time HAL Laboratories worked on a game was Melee. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, like, ideally, I would love to have an adventure mode and a story mode. That way That'd you have a story amazing. mode, and then you'd have an adventure mode. I mean, mode I love Classic, them. and I love All-Star. They're good staples ever since Melee, especially All-Star mode. But I love adventure mode so much. Yeah, adventure mode putting me through all those different scenarios and the stuff. Because, I mean, I, well, that was always... And it created different kind of levels that didn't exist. Like, when you had to run to the finish, or, like, the F-Zero... Yeah, or or that one part where you have the um the Zelda area. Oh yeah, and then there's and all you have the to, yeah, dead yeah, yeah, you have to go to the four different you know areas and to try to find that one the room. one area where the Triforce would be. Yeah. Finish. Yeah, you know that was always fun. Like I, I I think I definitely think they're going to do something like that. But the toss up is whether they're also going to do a story mode. We don't know. But, I don't know. I don't know. I would love it, but enough time. But if they did, that'd be great. Yeah. But it, I'd be fine if there isn't as long as I get either Smash Run or Story Mode. or No, not Story Mode, sorry. As much as I'd love it. Adventure Mode. Yeah. I miss Adventure Mode. That was if we, if we had both of them, because if they just already had Smash Run and they had an Adventure Mode, then, I mean, that stuff like that would automatically justify the purchase, even if I wasn't going to already get in. 
I mean, we're going to get it yeah. anyway, Smash Brothers. I also think that they're going to have all the stages from the 3DS version. Oh, I, I because... hope so, because I love Pac-Man stage in the 3DS, and I absolutely hated his Wii U one. Yeah, I think that they're going to be merging like the stages, because then that would give a huge roster Such of stages. Such a huge roster of stages. What would be great is, though, for the 3DS stages, if they kept the 3DS graphics, but then you have the characters all cleaned up and nice looking. So then, But then it makes a perfect sense, because then it's like, here's a 3DS stage, so it looks like a stage from the 3DS, yeah. even though you have a bunch of Switch characters. Yeah, though I, I do think that is, some of them would be cleaned up to be... Well, some of them could be, but I think some like um, the... Kalos Tower or whatever, like the one where you're flying around that one city with the giant tower that's supposed to look like the the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. Like, on the 3DS stage. Like, that, I think, should stay looking 3DS because of, you know, X and Y is a 3DS game, and it looked very much like it was pulled straight from the game. Yeah. Yeah, that would be neat. Just, just maybe cleaned up, you know, graphics just a little bit. Although, bring back Saffron City, please. Please, and I like that's what I want. I want them to bring back some old classic stages because there's some old stages. I mean, I was happy when Hyrule Temple came back. Like I was cheering, that was great. And I was like, the whole time I'm like, Staff Front City, though. Like my brother and I, and my older brother's especially dying because that was one of his favorite stages, and we played it like just like oh, crazy. I, I love that Front stage. <laughs> like, it's such a good stage. Yeah, I mean, I, I I have a feeling that they're going to bring back the the stages. Like I think they're going to bring back more stages because ever since you know. Really, they started with Brawl, they've been, and going into the Wii U, they've realized, okay, a lot of people like these older stages, so we could bring some of them back. Not all of them, because not all of them were, well, great, but, you know. The, I mean, if they had to get rid of a stage, as much as I love old school classic arcade games, that Donkey Kong stage needs to go. The 75M, wasn't it? Uh, you know, because there's Donkey Kong on top, and there's the stupid things that keep popping down. Yeah. It's such a, like, people talk about turn-off stage hazard. That entire stage is a stage hazard. Yeah, I never really had much fun on that stage. Mm. I mean, it's a cool class of throwback, but... Mm. In terms of actually playing on it... It's a, such a stage hazard. Yeah. Now, for the stuff that's not... The stuff that they're going to take out, like, officially... I think Smash Tour is not going to make it back. I mean, it's fun if you have a huge group of friends with you, and you're like, instead of Mario Party, let's play Mario Party, but with fists. Well, I mean, but if, if they actually went out of their way to upgrade it to Smash Tour to be an actual fun thing, to be like Mario Party, but with Smash Brothers, I think it could be fun. I mean, I did have fun, but granted, that's because I was either playing with you and a bunch of my other friends for my birthday, or all my siblings were over, and we were just having fun with it. Yeah, but... But, but that's more of the people I was with. It wasn't yeah. Smash Tour itself, I think. Yeah, I mean, Smash Tour is a neat idea that I don't think they quite executed very well. And I always defaulted to Smash Run. And I, I always I ended up ignoring Smash Tour after playing it a couple times just because I, I, I would only play it with friends, you know. And I didn't ha I didn't do that. It's not fun to do by yourself no. at all. Like, you should have a mode where it could be fun even to play by yourself. I mean, you could, as much as Mario Party is supposed to be a multiplayer game, you could still have fun playing Mario Party by yourself. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean... It, the I have no friends mode. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so while it's a neat idea, and I would be, I would be, I would welcome it back if they changed Smash Run, or not Smash Run, but Smash Tour to be more, you know, enhanced and more fun than, but otherwise, I feel like they would probably be better off, you know, cutting it and focusing on other modes, like an adventure mode or story mode. Because I really... And tournament mode absolutely needs to be in the game from the start. Yes. And what we know that since they're doing a tournament for the E3, that I have a feeling that they're going to make that a priority as part of the multiplayer. Because everybody loved tournament mode ever since Melee. Like, oh, yeah. That needs to be in the game from the start. I mean, as much as I love Smash Wii U, the fact that it wasn't in the game from the start is a little sad. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think they're going to make sure that this release... Because I, I think they... Since we know that they only announced it, like, what, six months before it's releasing... Or uh, roughly about it's coming out this year though. I they I think they're ba I think they already have everything pretty much already set, and they're finishing up. I have a my prediction is it's probably going to come out holiday this year because what better Christmas gift than Smash Brothers? Well, especially since you know that they're. Um, I mean, it was doing the same the, for the Wii U. They released that one holiday season. Yeah, too. but and we also know that since they're doing they're announcing <coughs> the um, online and the actually launching it later this year. I think in the fall because they were talking. Yeah, about, the, they were talking about it for Arms and Dark Souls. Yeah, they're they're um they're sort of like it's around that time, 
last like half of the year, the last quarter of the year. So probably like September or October. Yeah, so a lot of people are thinking that that's going to be a big game. Like Smash Brothers is going to be one of the big games that they use as a pillar for the online. Well, I have a feeling though, since they were talking about ARMS though, and then Dark Souls, and they're talking about these testing events, I bet they're using that as a testing ground to see how well that online works. And then they'll know, okay, this this will be great for Smash. Right. Right, but they got to test their waters first before you know they go all in because you don't want Smash to be your first game doing it because Smash is so important. Well, and because the the uh, the online for the last couple of games has always had issues. Even it, Brawl was a bit messy. Wii U is better, still had some issues. So I think that they're taking their time to really because we know we've seen what they did with Mario Kart Eight, what they yeah. did with Arms. What well, they've done with Splatoon. And they're now doing also Mario Tennis, I right. believe. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's going to have online. So, yeah, they're really obviously making sure that, you know, the online systems function right. So they Oh, yeah, and Splatoon. And, yeah. So, yeah, and I, and I think for especially for a paid service, they want to make sure it's all all solid. So I, what I, and unlike all the other gaming communities, it's just $20. For yeah. else, you got to pay a fortune. Yeah. Yeah, but... Oh. Now, for the big stuff to talk about was a lot of the features that will be added. Like, okay, we know there's going to be new characters. We know there's going to be new stages. Let's bring this up first. They absolutely, totally are going to bring back the Ice Climbers. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I've, I've been saying that ever since. I can say that with 100% confidence. Because with the only the only reason they weren't in Smash Brothers Wii U was because the 3DS couldn't handle four-player like Ice Climbers. It could handle a couple of them fine, but it just couldn't handle the AIs for Nana with four players. That's why Luma is such a very simple AI. Whereas, mm. granted, I wish them, like, make... But then again, they didn't want to nerf Nana, like Luma, because of that's absolutely the importance of the Ice Climbers. Yeah. Is that Nana functions just as well as Bobo. Yeah. So I, I think that, you know, since we know that we already know, Sakurai literally said that they had a working build for the Ice Climbers and on the, the Wii U. And the only version they got cut is because of... The, the, Sakurai wanted to be fair because he knew some people might not be able to afford the Wii U so they could only get the 3DS version. And he wanted people to have the exact same access to all the same characters. Because you're not going for Smash for the stages, for the assist trophies, for for the music. I mean, that stuff's all candy, but the the sole reason people are playing Smash Brothers is for the characters. characters. So yeah, I mean, if you have the Wii U has Ice Climbers and 3DS doesn't, that would automatically make the Wii U the better version. And, and that would make 3DS people who could only afford it feel left out. And while... Like, I know some people were sad about that, and I'm like, I was sad too, but I understood it at least, because Sakurai was trying to be fair to 3DS players too. Yeah. But, you know, so, I mean, we're going to get new those new characters. We're going to get some of them, more new characters, but I think we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. We're definitely going to get new stages, and, you know, we were talking about this, like, hoping that we would get new stages even for older returning characters. Like, Bayonetta is going to return. Yeah. Like, we were hoping that there was going to be, like, a Bayonetta, a Bayonetta 2, 2 stage. We're, like, we were actually discussing, like, what would be awesome stage for Bayonetta 2, and we're like, oh. Like, in, the opening Inferno. scene on the, the, with the, in the city would be cool, but right, Inferno during, during the, would be even better. It'd well, be because, much more because iconic. And Inferno was much more attached to Bayonetta 2, while the falling clock tower is, is very Bayonetta much Bayonetta 1. 1. And it would also be very different from being at a one stage, because, you know, if you start you had, off... You had all the angels on the Falling Clock Tower right. stage, whereas Inferno could have a you lot of demons, demons, and it would just be so cool. I'm like, you can even have an area where you're constantly running on different, like, floating parts of Inferno, and there's a bunch of demons floating around. Oh, yeah. There's that little demon horse thing with, like, the long, like, axe, like, yeah. or sword, like, unicorn horn yeah, that's yeah. running around in the background. Yeah. You could even have, like, I don't know, like, you just see Balder in the background chasing Loki or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, and we... Oh, I'm sorry, spoilers, Mass Lumen, <laughs> even though everybody knew who it was. It's not I can, really, I, I can, it, it's I, not a spoiler uh, if it's obvious. I can tell you that from the very beginning of the game, but... Well, people were saying that before the game came out. As soon as they saw the Mass Lumen, everybody in the comments were like, Balder, <laughs> like, they're like, come on, it's obvious. Yeah, but... He uh, literally throws a peacock feather at Loki at one point, even in one of the trailers, and they were just like... It, you're, you're not even trying to hide that that's Balder. <laughs> yeah, another stage would be cool. It's like you and you, you actually had this suggestion in the first stage was the, the Hyrule Castle from Breath of the Wild. That would be really it's, cool. Where it's um, corrupted with, with all, all the malice of the, yeah, uh, of uh, Ganon. Yeah, calamity Ganon. Yeah. So I mean, that would actually be a cool stage. I would love to have that. Like you'd have classic Hyrule uh, Castle, then you have Breath of the Wild Hyrule Castle. 
but it's covered in malice and it's occasionally all dark. and occasionally like if you want a stage hazard like you'll have monsters like emerging from from the malice yeah that 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 would be cool but i mean uh, you know there's so many like i think they're going to add a bunch of new stages there, ooh i was also just thinking there absolutely needs to be a new donk city stage oh yes for yes for Mario odyssey and that or the moon for Mario Odyssey, but I think New Donk Stage is much more iconic. Well, yeah, and particularly because that was in the reveal trailer, so... Ooh, especially if it's, like, it's got a mode where it's nighttime and you have Pauline singing well, in it, the background. Well, it would be like um, the um, Smashville in, um, where you have, like, if you go into, like, 6 o'clock on Saturday, it yeah. has, um, Tom, or what's his name, the, uh, the musician guy. Tom... No, 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 no Tom Nook no. is... Yeah, Tom Nook's the mayor or something. No, he's the salesman. No, no, the not the mayor. Yeah. That's Isabel. Yeah, but no. <laughs> I haven't played Animal Crossing in a while. Well, it would be the musician guy. He uh, is the dog guy. Yeah, the so. dog dude. I remember who so, yeah, about. So it would be Dubai like him show. playing that stage, but then for New Donk City, it would be Mayor Pauline with doing singing um, Jump Superstar. It would be cool is like, because you have different Mario themes that'll obviously go to that stage because it's a Mario stage, but then it'll have like, if you're playing on the stage long enough, the side of the lights go out and immediately Jump Up Superstar gets playing. Like, I would like, love that. Because everyone loves that song are you kidding yeah yeah so i mean we're definitely gonna get a whole bunch of new stages particularly a lot of stuff from modern like you know some of the switch games oh a splatoon stage though oh oh yeah we know because we're getting inkling so we know they're definitely gonna have a splatoon stage they but, have to It'd but, but so what, what, what would the stage be like there's like you could have the city you could have octo canyon you could have you, it, it, they, they could even have a traveling stage which would go from the different locations because there's so many great locations there are and there's so many different, you know, quirky things with Splatoon that, you know... Like, or what if they do, like, a subway stage to, like, you know... Oh, for the Octo Expansion. To advertise the Octo Expansion. That would be cool, especially if it's on, like, a, a moving stage on... You know, and then, of subway. course, they have the awesome song, Frosty! Yeah. Get yeah, Frosty! Yeah. yeah, I mean... I love that song. Yeah, I'm, you know, and I know we were talking about the you know, assist trophies. It'd be, like, it would be really cool if they had someone, like, um... Uh, Marie and Callie, or Agent 8 is one of the... Or um, Agent 3, even. Since oh, Agent, Agent 3. Because Agent 3's got a cannon look, or even... It'd be really funny, also, if it was just any of the random side characters, like Sheldon, but his his attack is really only that he just bores people to death because he won't stop talking. Or or he just throws um, weapons, like the octoling weapons. Ooh, actually, that was something I didn't think about. New items. Wouldn't it be cool if one of the items, like, because we used, added a bunch of new items, if just one item was, like, just one of the weapons from Splatoon, like, you got the roller blush or, like, the little splatting paintbrush. Oh, yeah, that would... That, that would be really fun you just hit people with it and they get paint like all over like their character model <laughs> yeah though you know when it comes to the the inkling we still don't know exactly how the character is going to function we'll probably have to wait till e3 to actually see the i can't wait action. to see it it's gonna be so exciting they're definitely going to be adding a bunch of assist trophies, particularly if they just bring it back all the old ones that they mm -hmm. had from the wii u version there are already a bunch of assist trophies and just add more <laughs> yeah like like uh for Bayonetta, since going back to Bayonetta, because yeah. we love that game so much. Like, you could have either Rodan or Jean or Rosa, or as we were saying, I, I, like, Balder would be I would amazing. love it's Balder. Just, he, like, I, or even Loki, I think, would be a cool one, too. But Balder's, like, my top pick, because he's so great in Bayonetta, too. It's, like, my, became my instant favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, awesome. I was thinking they should also have, like, a cis trophy, or maybe, like, one of the things that Samus fights in Samus Returns. Or oh, maybe, um, one of the uh, the Metroid forms. Yeah, like that, or maybe something from Metroid Prime to basically well, advertise or, Metroid Prime Four. It'd be cool if they had one of the other hunters that was in the Metroid Prime series. Like they could do something like that, because you know you got to add a little something to advertise something, every, everything here and there. Oh, and they should also either have one of the champions, or at the very least, because he's one of the most popular characters, Sidon as an assist trophy. That would be good. It'd be Sidon, or was it Daruk? Daruk, yeah. Daruk's protection. He says, yeah, Daruk or Sidon is in the assist trophy. I mean, I could easily see any of the other ones. Like, Urbosa would be great. She just comes on, she just snaps and <laughs> lightning bolts yeah. on the stage. Yeah, I mean, all the all the, the champions would be great. And I, I wouldn't even be surprised if they brought all four of the champions in just because, you know. Yeah, they're so pop. Or, yeah. oh, because remember, um, actually, now that I think about it, because um, of Midgard, you could actually summon monsters and they didn't have to be assist trophies. You just would go to a thing and they would assist. Some of them would be stage hazards and some of them would be like, in a way, they worked almost like assist trophies. What if there was an area that glowed and you had to like touch it kind of like, 
like whenever you're in the Divine Beast, and the character that touched it the first could summon the champion, and that champion could help you. If it's Mipha, then she'd heal you. If it's Daruk, then you get you the get instant Daruk's protection. You get the instant shield that doesn't break momentarily. If you get um, Molly, then you have like the most amazing recovery ever. And I'm like, and if it's Robosa, of course she comes in and she just zaps people on stage for you. Yeah. <laughs> like if you did would... something like that, that would be really cool. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's so much that they could do, and I know that they're going to be doing more gimmicks like that because Sakurai did did very specifically want to do it in the Wii U version to have a lot of stuff that's distinct and stuff that is so distinct. Yeah. Like, like the Midgard stage is one of my favorite stages. Like that, they really went all in, and you can see how much that they've put a lot of respect for different video games. Yeah, I would love to. I, w I wouldn't even mind if they put another. Um, Final Fantasy stage in, or if they added more um, Final Fantasy assist trophies, like it'd be really awesome if you saw like Tifa. Oh as yes, T Tifa absolutely. Because we were thinking some of the third-party characters should start getting some more assist trophies, like kind of like how Sonic's got Shadow. And I'm like, what if um, there's one for Ryu, and then it's uh, and it's either Ken or M. Or, Bison, or or, or, um, or his master, the one who taught him in. Yeah, that'd be, be cool him too. coming in, or or, 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 or so Dan Hibiki. Yeah, or like Chun Li or something. Yeah, like, I mean, I mean, because there are dozens of characters that everyone loves from you know Street Fighter. I mean, Mega Man's got Elect Man as like an assist trophy. I'm but like, it, so... it, it would be really cool if he had like Roll come in. Yeah. I'm like, but I want Proto Man, or at the very least, an alternate skin that legit is Proto Man. Like that would be really cool. Yeah, that that would be that would be great to see, particularly if it's all done in the classic style like Mega Man is. It just it'd be great. I mean, they're the same size, so it work. All you do is just make him red, give him shade, a little scarf, and then just put a shield on his arm. Yeah, wouldn't even need to change the actual functions, but. I mean, they're both robot masters. Yeah. Technically. I mean, okay, Mega Man fought the Robot Monsters, but what are we kidding? They're all robots. <laughs> yeah. I really think that they're going to add new modes. Like, I know this is actually something I was, didn't really thought about before, but I was watching people's videos on this, mm -hmm. and people were talking about having distinct modes. Like, you know how in, you know, you know they had the modes like you beat people up and you get the money and you have to collect the money. Or yes. The, or you have the super sudden death where, it's like, you have... Sudden death. I would I would really love to see like more modes like just added in not 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 like adventure mode or story mode but just multiplayer modes that you can play, like like so like someone actually has a suggestion I think they're like a fan of like um, the uh, Marvel versus Capcom where you have like you can choose two or three characters and you can switch between them while you're yeah. playing in any specific match I mean stuff like that would actually be cool or you have very what if, yeah what if you had a mode it's literally like street fighter mode <laughs> just like and then the characters are suddenly moving like that granted I don't think that would happen but that would no, be that'd, funny that would be funny I mean, but it would probably take too much work because everything's set up so differently but you know I mean I, I think that they're going to add a whole bunch of new modes or if not a bunch but several new modes like because you know they had the eight player yeah smash. eight player smash that's Gotta which, which that, yeah, that's, that's definitely going to come back. Because, I mean, come on, people just meet up online and they can eight player it up. Yeah, because that was always fun. like that was fun like having that many. And you know they're gonna have a thing probably just to hook into the UPS thing and then you pull it out and then there's like all the little like things to plug in your GameCube controllers because come on that's what everybody came for for the Wii U and everyone's like yes. Well, and, and we know that the um the Wii U GameCube adapter does work for the Switch. They that was in one of the older um, updates because I think if someone was. I remember hearing about that like last year or something, and a lot of people were like, "But well, why would you do this?" And be like, "Smash!" Because every the GameCube controller, it's is, it's everybody's been using it since Melee. I mean, yeah. nobody used the Wii Motes for Brawl. Everybody just put in their GameCube controller and yeah. just played that way. Yeah. So I mean, that and then though the um. The, the Pro Controller would probably be good for it, too, but, you know, I, I still have my... It's just, I have to have my GameCube controller when I'm playing Smash. It just feels so right. Yeah. No matter what version of Smash I'm playing, unless it's the N64, then you really can't help it. Yeah. I mean, though it would be actually really awesome if they you know, if they brought back Virtual Console. They let you have play the older Smash games. That would be really that fun. That would be really cool, as a, as a side note. But, oh, it would also would be really, really fun... They have to bring back the same narrator. We need our Xander. Xander Mobus. Z like, the guy has this great voice and this... The coolest name ever. Like, seriously, how do you get into up with a name Xander Mobus? But, yeah, I mean, he There's was great. Some people are born great. So, yeah, I mean, I, I love some. I love the old um, announcers, but Xander Mobus was, was great. Like, I would love to see him come back and just... Even if he just redid everything, just, just for... 
just because. Yeah, instead of using his same voice lines, they're like, no, we just want you to record everything over again. I know we have old audio of you saying all the characters that are returning, but do it again. <laughs> Sakurai demands perfection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, characters we were thinking that need to also come back. Wolf. Mm. Wolf needs to come back. Because a, a lot of the clones, if there's one thing I appreciated of Brawl doing, is that they to try to start making first off Falco feel a little more distinct. Falco started feeling a lot more distinct. Like he now feels like his own character for the most and part. And then they did the same thing with Wolf. Granted, the same final smashes. I'm like, come on. Yeah, the for the for Wolf at the very least, they, he has a different base move set with just a couple of similar things, which I didn't even particularly mind. Particularly because they made it set. They they specifically established that he was just copying the Star Fox technology. I'm like, yeah. okay, all right, all right. That, that, that's that's justifiable there. Yeah. I'm like, but Wolf absolutely needs his own final smash. Maybe something where he jumps in an R wing and his, suddenly it's him and his team and they try to bombard everybody with bombs or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But Falco absolutely needs to be in his R wing and he's just blasting at you with his lasers. And and his line needs to be personally I prefer the air. Yeah, it still still needs to have the same line, but then he gets into his R wing. That that would be. And if Sheik and Zelda remain separate characters, please change Sheik's final smash. I mean, and though uh, there's there's been a lot of discussion about will they keep them separated or will they bring them back together? Because the only reason that they separated them was because of the 3DS. Because it, it but could... that's the same with Samus and Zero Suit Samus. It couldn't handle the transformation, so they decided all transforming characters, which is also why Charizard's his own character and no other Pokemon. Yeah. Just Charizard, because Charizard was the most popular out of the three. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I I do I I like what they did with Zero Suit Samus, and I wasn't big on Zero Suit Samus from Brawl. But I like how they made her her own character and her I own... freaking love the jet. <laughs> the the heels. jet high heels, like that, that was great. so cool. I want my own jet heels, like because then I can look pretty and I can kick your butt. Yeah, so I I think that I I do think that characters like Samus and Zero Suit Samus will be separated because most there's a lot of people who would just play as either Samus or Zero Suit Samus. I love so, it. And I do think that there's going to be. But I do think like Samus, like it's not Samus, but Zelda. Like I just feel like Zelda is so like set in being um, a transformation character. Like even now I always think of her as a transformation character. I mean character. I didn't mind it. I know some people did. But I also some people do love the new move set. So I'm like if her and Sheik do stay separated at the very least please change Sheik's final smash. Yeah. She has absolutely no reason to have the exact same spinal smash if she's now her own character slot. Yeah, but you know this is something also we talked about before that I suggested is that for a new character you bring in Toon Zelda because they did consider that. They had considered that her name was in the data files for Brawl. Says, so but you know you have Toon Zelda, and, and then she becomes Tetra. Right, but you would have Toon Zelda have different moves, and if you if you bring um, Zelda and Sheik back together as one character is transforming, transforming. then you give like the phantom move to... To Toon Zelda, that would be sense. And maybe the, the grenade move can be go to like Tetra. To... But instead she launches like little bombs. Yeah. Like so... from Wind Waker. Or, ooh, she pulls them out of the ground, like suddenly the ground suddenly has a flower there for no reason. She mm. pulls it out just like a Wind Waker when Link would find those flower bombs. Yeah. So And that right there is an entirely you know awesome move set that you can do because then you can start making a lot more of these references to the Toon... I yeah, do think Zelda. Toon Link's moveset should change slightly. Yes. Even though he's not identical to Link, he does have a shorter reach. His boomerang does move differently. He he, he moves around differently. He has a different jump. He has a different weight feel to when he's falling. I'm like, so thankfully, like, there's justification for him as a clone. And I was like, but at the and same it, time, he's got stuff he could use well, from I, Wind Waker I, uh, and from Spirit right. Track and, and Phantom Hourglass. Like, like, what I want to see is, like, I know that they changed the boomerang to be the Wind Waker boomerang, but give him something like the Skull Hammer. Like, I love the skull hammer. I mean, I'm okay with the bombs, because then it does that cute little cartoony smoke effect. Yeah, the, the, bom the bombers are good. But, you know, I want them to change it to be a little... Like, it doesn't have to be completely different, but I would like... Lo and as much as I love the hook shot instead, he should have that little... The little grappling. Yeah, well, yeah. So he throws the grappling hook from Wind Waker, and, and then he can pull, pull the people and, in. and it would still function similarly to the, um, the hook shot. Or maybe he can aim it in different ways, like you can. Well, do... yeah, and he needs the hammer, like you said. He absolutely needs the hammer. Yeah, I mean, and then, and then maybe the wind, maybe the or maybe wind... the, and maybe instead of the boomerang, he can have the Deku leaf, and he just blows people away with it. Like well, he weighs it, like you do in Breath of the Wild, or, and can go. Or 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 maybe the um, he can use the Deku leaf. Like, you know how Peach can float? Oh, yeah. Or maybe, use the maybe, umbrella? Maybe he double jumps, yeah, and, yeah, then and then he floats down on yeah, the little um, deco leaf. 
Yeah, I mean, stuff like, I mean, even if it, even if he sells a lot of the base moves the same, giving him those specific... I mean, his side smashes and stuff like that, that can all stay the same. I'm just saying, yeah. I would like his B moveset to have at least some differences to it, because of Wind Waker has got its own series of games from the adult timeline that I feel like they should pull from more with Toon Link. Right. And, you know, for his final smash, I would love to him if he had something different than the, the yeah, Triforce that, that, Yeah, see, that's the same problem I have with Sheik's, like... Toon Link needs his own final smash. Like, what if instead he's, like, riding on the King of Red Lions, or he does something with the Wind Waker, or, like, he summons a freaking tornado. Yeah. You know, or, or it'd be, like, in Spirit Tracks, just get on the, to the train and, and just the run train people. just runs people over. Yeah, or, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. Because, I mean, there's so, there's, there's so much rich, you uh, know, gameplay. The, or even then, you could even pull from, since, you know, it's the Toon Link art style, what if instead... He pulls out the four sword, splits into four links, and then he attacks people. Yeah, that would be great because you know that'd be his final smash. Like, because then it's pulling from another. Because that's essentially what they like to do. They like to pull from different continuities right. and stick them in one link. Right, and particularly because he's not Wind Waker Link, he's Toon Link, and he and he's basically an amalgam of all of them. You can add all these different things, and I would just really love to and have. Maybe he's tiny, and then he's like all minish, and then he just I don't know somehow kills people by being really tiny. <laughs> So is he Ant-Man now? Maybe. I don't know. Ask the Minish Cap. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean... That would at know. least be a good skin for him. Like, instead his hat turns into a little bird hat from Minish yeah. Cap. That'd be yeah. a really funny skin. Just, yeah. like, it's just his hat changes. That's it. Nothing else. Another character that needs to return is Solid Snake. Yes. I mentioned this earlier, but with Konami... Like, people are like, well, no, you know, because it's Kojima doesn't work at Konami. No, no, no. But Konami and Nintendo are friendly, particularly because Bomberman are sold really well beyond their expectations. Well, and even if you wanted to bring in the argument of Kojima, the only reason Snake ended up in Smash, and originally he was going to appear in Melee, is because of Kojima ass Sakurai. And Sakurai is like, sure. So it's yeah. not like there's any animosity between Sakurai and Kojima. I don't know what, where you people are pulling this from. Well, and there's no animosity between anyone. And people are like, well, they're going to respect Kojima and keep Snake from being in. But wouldn't, if they wanted to respect Kojima, like, wouldn't they put... Wouldn't they put Snake in to respect Kojima? Yeah, it's just, I, I think a lot of people have this weird idea that anything that's not Nintendo is like, it's on thin ice completely. And he like, guys, like... We Sonic has been a mainstay since Brawl, so... And there's so many third-party characters in the Wii U 3DS mm -hmm. version. Yes, because you, you got Cloud, you got Ryu, you got um, Sonic, you Mega got Pac-Man. Mega, Man, Mega Man, Man is in so many, also, of a lot of the trailers, to, to the point where people are like, wow, Mega Man's getting as much love and attention as regular mainstay Nintendo characters, because yeah. Nintendo's what Cap can. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would love to see Snake. I don't even care if they change up his moveset at all or if they change his design. I mean, I would love to see him in his Metal Gear Solid 1 design because that's that's one of my favorites out of the, the game. But it absolutely has got to be David Hayter. Yeah. Like, if if Nintendo actually brings back David Hayter as Snake, they, they bring Snake back and they have David Hayter as his voice, So I even would lose even him. if he was in his Metal Gear 5 design, but oh. he had David Hayter, would you forgive him as long as it was David Hayter? I, if they brought him in sna as um, the Smash and gave a David Hayter, I would, I wouldn't forgive the, I wouldn't forgive, you know, Kojima, but I would forgive... I would say that this is good for Nintendo. <laughs> like, like is it just because it's David Well, Hayter? because even if they had um, his Metal Gear Solid 3 design, which actually was on the 3DS, actually, for Metal Gear Solid 3D, which is a fantastic game. But, uh, you know, I would love it if they, you know, brought Snake back. And I just, I love Snake because Snake being in Brawl is what got me into Metal Gear Solid in the first place. I've never played a Metal Gear game in my life. I still haven't. I still barely know anything about it. Anytime he talks about it, a lot of it's just way over my head. But I love Snake and Brawl. He's so much fun to play as. And all of the codex were hilarious. And we absolutely need to have Paula Latina hijacking either Snake's codex or Snake trying to hijack Paula Latina's guy. Oh, yeah. Like... Cause, I mean the play, the the you know, the play around with all those was so fun in Brawl and and even in uh, the Wii U for you know, Palatina's guidance is like, I hair floating in the air sorry <laughs> I mean I, I would love to have them back because Snake was so fun now I mean I think I think we've all but I think everyone figured out that they're going to be putting um, an arms fighter in the game. Yeah, I mean, they put in Splatoon. It's yeah. one of their new IPs. And ARMS is another one of their new big IPs. Right, and they're really doing a big push on, you know, ARMS. And there's a lot that you can do with that. Though the question is, who? Because there's a wide cast of characters from, you know, ARMS. 
But I think I kind of, we kind of narrowed it down. It's going to be some, one of the more popular ones, like Min Min or Twintel. Yeah, they're the most popular. Right. Though, you know, since Min Min can fight anyways, like, I, I mean, I was always kind of throwing my um, my hat in for for uh, Min Min. You know, but I know that Twintel's also really popular. So, it really, I really doesn't know, like, which one they would pick. I mean, you could always have one and the other be an assist trophy. Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, I do think they're going to have another one, maybe, like, Spring Man or... Um, Ribbon Girl be one of the uh, assist trophies. So people always get angry about do you confirm for assist trophies, but I don't because I know. Like like when I saw Midna and Skull Kid and Girahim and people were like, oh, deconfirmed. And I'm like, no, that's Sakurai acknowledging people. Like, wow, these people really wanted to see these characters smash. I can't put every single video game character in Smash, but I still want to acknowledge you people and at least give you a little taste of something. Yeah. And that made me happy, because I didn't expect to see these characters be acknowledged at all. And they're yeah. at least getting some acknowledgement. It's the same thing with Gino getting a Mii Fighter costume. Like, I, I, thought, I, I, I never I, thought I'd see the day where Gino would be acknowledged. acknowledged. It's like, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, Gino's deconfirmed. He's not going to be, okay, no. He's not in the game as a fighter, but they're acknowledging it. And the fact that Square has been holding on to Gino with an iron grip since, you know, since Mario, Super Mario RPG... It's so like, I love, he's like my favorite character in Super Mario so RPG. Cool. It's like, I would love it if they brought him in just because they know that he is one of the most requested fighters. Even in the... if he's just an assist trophy in the new game or something, yeah. I would scream because yeah. of that's once again just more of Nintendo is noticing you. Yeah, well, and we know that the relationship with Square is good because freaking Cloud Strife is. I never in... thought I'd see the day. And Cloud, because Cloud's only had basically cameo roles on games that were in on Nintendo consoles. So the fact that he's getting in, like, this opens up the floodgate for other characters like Geno. Who, yeah, it's like, there's there's nothing holding Gino back from being in the game. Because Square is totally cool with Nintendo. I'm like, but this also opens the door for any third-party character that can mm. possibly show up. Yeah, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the... Granted, they have to at least appear once on a Nintendo console or yeah, something. Yeah, that, that, that's the requirement. <laughs> and I'm like, but still, that alone, just like... Mm. Dreams can truly become reality, as everyone's been saying. Crash for Smash. Crash for Smash, <laughs> because I would love it if they brought in Crash, but then they had the um, the trailer for him. For the be, insane who, trailer. Yeah, we, no, no, no. Um, oh yeah, the old the old yeah, school trailer. Yeah, yeah. For Crash being announced for Smash, it's he come, it comes out and be like that one Crash Bandicoot trailer where Crash goes to the Nintendo headquarters and he's like, "Your greatest nightmare has appeared." Says, "How are you feeling, Plumber Boy?" It's like, <laughs> yeah, but instead, it's like it's animated like the video it's, game. It's this Crash. crash it's just like, it's 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 like, I'm ecstatic for the insane trilogy coming to the Switch, and I would love it if Crash got into Smash. Like, that would be my childhood, being able to have Mario fight Crash, and Sonic, and Pac-Man. It doesn't even need any fancy talent, because everyone else, like, here's, like, cl Cloud Storms in a battle, blah, 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 for Crash. It'll literally be just Crash for Smash. <laughs> Crash settles it in Smash. <laughs> Crash says, let me Smash. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I, I, would, I would really love that, but, um... And Rex and Pyra, I think a lot of people are basically think that they're a shoe in because Sakurai, I know he was saying that he loves Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Like, apparently he's been really playing that. Yeah. Like, crazy. So, a lot of people are like, well, it's the most recent, confirmed. It's the most recent Xenoblade. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was really popular. It sold better than the last two uh, Xenoblade games. So, it's it's really hit, it hit over a million really quickly. So, yeah, they're probably going to be putting that in. But, okay, but if they do get in, this is a thought I had last night. They either need to have the the guy with the eye patch. I think his name is Zeke. He needs I, to I be an assist that. trophy. And I'm like, because if he's hilarious, as people jokingly said, he's like he's like the Owain of <laughs> Xenoblade. I'm like, or the Welsh cat girl, whatever her name is. I'm sorry. You got I, a lot of nerve. You got a lot of nerve. <laughs> I'm like, I need Welsh cat girl as an assist trophy. I think her name's Nia. Yeah. Or. Or if we got Ryan from Xenoblade Chronicles, it's, it's wrong, wrong time. time. <laughs> I don't know if playing Xenoblade Chronicles one, be like, <laughs> yeah, I, I love this character. Or um, what's her name? Um, Fiora. Fiora, yeah, it'd be great. Well, to I see. mean, she's in Project Cross Zone too, yes. as well. So she's getting a little more exposure, and she's so, got her cool little robot form. So she, heck, she could be a fighter. 
I think mm. she'd be like really cool. Especially, and she would go really well with Shulk. Like I think she'd be a really great fighter. And Smash is always looking to add more female characters. Mm, yeah, F Fiora would be amazing. I would love to have Fiora in. Especially with her cool curved double blades. Like like just playing as her in Project Cross Zone Two, where she's teamed up with Cosmos of Xenosaga. They both are just they work as a great team, and they're both robot girls, so it works. Except one's a literal robot, where the other is a, a cyborg. cyborg. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. But, uh, I think another character that needs to be in is Crystal. I mean, We've Crystal... have been saying this forever. I've been saying this forever. I've been saying this since God, since the lead-up to Brawl was going on. Way back, way, way over a decade. Gosh, a decade, literal Sorry. decade ago. And I've even seen old forums where people describe what her moveset would be like. And I'm like, that's exactly what I imagine. Oh, like, and, and I... I've never even seen this person before. So I'm like, I love that a lot of people who are banking on Crystal thought of a lot of the same ideas for a crystal moveset. Right. Granted, some people had different ideas of what a final smash could be. Like, some people said, like, I don't know, she could utilize something with the Krozoa spirit. Or another people are like, what if she's, like, riding on, like, the... Mother like, effing Tricky. Just real yeah. riding in, because, you know, by the time they get to Star Fox Assault, he's big. Be well, like riding in on the dinosaurs. And then another person <laughs> said she could also be on the, the, the pterodactyl guy. Oh, yeah. Like, in the start of the game. And, you know, it's spitting out fireballs. <laughs> She spins yeah. out fireballs at yeah. you. Yeah, and I would actually really love it if she got a design that was in line with Fox and Falco and Smash because it says I I, I really would love to see it because they they took because what they do is they take the like the the sleekness of the um, assault designs but they give them some of the old feel the the, the classic sixty four. Yeah. So it'd be really cool if she had like her assault suit but with her jack a jacket over it and the the little scouter. Like thing. just to just to match Fox and Falco. I yeah. think that'd be really cool. Right, and be really I want to see her use her. I staff. mean, they updated. Martha and Roy, oh, even, yeah. though, even though that's not what Martha and Roy look like in their games, but they thought, let's update their design, right, modernize it. Right, fantastic Roy in the Roy especially looks really good. I oh, love yeah. Roy's new design. Yeah, Roy, yeah, Roy's design was amazing. He's Ooh, our boy. Yeah, Roy's our boy. Golden Roy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that was that was really great to see. Although, now, thanks to, like, Fire Emblem Heroes and Fire Emblem Warriors, Roy and Marth have English voice actors now, so I wonder, are they going to break tradition and like let Roy and Marth actually speak in English now? I would actually kind of hope so, because I... Well, yes, because Marth has got Yuri Lewenthal as his English actor, and I'm like, please, I want Yuri. <laughs> I like him. He's such a great actor. And I'm like, but it would be great as if they had an option, but instead of the option, all the characters in Japanese option to turn only Roy and Marth into Japanese or not. Yes. <laughs> That would be really funny. It's like option for Japanese, but it's just those two. Yeah. No subtitles. <laughs> I also really am. Ho I'm. I'm. I know a lot of people are hoping for Sora from Kingdom Hearts. I am definitely. Well, and because of all the rumors of Kingdom Hearts coming to the Switch. Well, and... Square Enix has a good relationship with Nintendo, and even before their relationship was rocky, they still had several of their Kingdom Hearts games appear on Nintendo consoles, or at least portables. Because I mean, you've had. Um, Chain of Memories was on the, the Game, Game Boy Advance. You then, had Recoded on the DS. Yeah, Coded, um, Days. Days was also on the DS. And, and then you had Dream Drop Distance. Dream Drop Distance is on the 3DS. 3DS. Yeah. And I'm like, so... Sora at least has been on some Nintendo stuff. Yeah, so, I mean, there's perfect justification. And if they were going to announce... Kingdom Hearts for the Switch, what better way than to put Sora right. in Smash? Well, that makes me wonder... Why put Cloud and Smash of all things? I'm like, are we gonna get Final Fantasy remake for the Switch as well? And I'm Who like, knows? Like, if, and they're is, and they're just sitting on this, waiting. Is, is Final is it, like people don't even know if the Final Fantasy VII remake is going to come out anytime soon at all. So in the next eighty years, it'll be on the Switch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And also PlayStation 4. Even though we'll probably have like Nintendo 200 and the, and the, the, the PlayStation 16. <laughs> like. Hey, I waited. I, I waited since the announcement for Final Fantasy Thirteen Versus. So that was in two thousand six. So <laughs> I can wait. <laughs> but uh, but th I think in an assist trophy because if I don't think Disney characters would be in the cards. No, but no, no. Probably but, like something more like Riku or Roxas or Axel or something like or, that. Or Aqua. Or Aqua. 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 Base mom. <laughs> Aqua yeah. would be amazing. Instead of Sora, it's Aqua, and yeah. I would be like, "What?" Well, and for you know, assist trophies and stuff like they don't have to be from the games because in is this something like in Mel in the um the um Shadow Moses stage for Brawl, 
a Metal Gear Gecko appears in the stage. And Metal Gear Geckos are only in Metal Gear Solid 4, which is the PlayStation 3 exclusive. So there's, you know, all bets are off for those. Well, especially for stages, I do think. Yeah. Stages could definitely, like, they could pull in all sorts of different references. Yeah. And I, and, I, and I do love the idea of stage hazards, though, even though I know people would like the option turn off. But I love it because this also gives the options for some characters to also appear. Like like Ridley in the and, Metroid stage. And, and the Yellow Devil. Yes, everybody hates the Yellow Devil, but that's the point of the Yellow Devil. You absolutely hate his guts because he's the most pain-in-the-neck boss to ever fight in Mega but, Man. But, but I think the option to be able to turn off those kinds of stage options hazards... Options are always good. The option, yeah, the option's there because then that's going to satisfy people without having to really change much. But I do like it because in a way it's almost like a mini-boss fight. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it can be fun at the right time with the right people, but... And I do think they should add some more stages with stuff like that. Like, a Pokemon stage should have, like, a legendary randomly show up. Like, what if there's a Johto stage, and then suddenly a wild Entei or Raikou or yeah. Suicune appears, like, just and like they did in yeah. the Johto games. Like, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Or something like that. Like, just... Or maybe a random Pokemon appears. Like, what if you're randomly, like, on, say, Route, I don't know, 21, and... It's really nothing in an area but filled with nothing but grass. And you guys are fighting, but every time a random wild Pokemon will pop out of the grass and attack you. Or, or, or it would be like the, um, the uh, was it the Burnt Tower in Ecruteague City? Yes. It says, and all of a sudden, one of the, the three legendary dogs appears. Yes. Like that, I mean, stuff like that would be really cool. I mean, you could still do stuff like that. Like, say, you're in one of the routes in Sun and Moon, and then one of their Pokemon attack you. Oh, speaking of Pokemon, I do think... Because we have Charizard representing the Fire Starter, we have Greninja representing Water Starter. They absolutely need to capitalize on the most recent game, Sun and Moon, and Ultra Sun and Moon. Instead, have whatever the name. Ra Rowlet's final form, right? Yeah, it's like um, starts with a D. It's a Ghost Grass. It's really cool looking. Desidai, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. However you say that name. Desidu, Desidu I. I, I think. Yeah, that. Whatever the 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 Ghost Grass. Bird he owl. looks so cool. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. He'll put an image of it right here. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I would, I would really love to to see that because then that that way you have three final forms from the three different elements of three different starters from all across the games. So I'm like, okay, you've gotten that set. That way you don't need to add a whole bunch of new Pokemon. And yeah. Because we already have we have Mewtwo, we have Pikachu, we have Lucario, we have Lucario, and. Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff, who but, for some reason is still in the game. I mean, granted, because she was part of the original 12, but at the same time, why was she brought back in yeah. Melee? Yeah, but... She's not really... Uh, well... She doesn't really have a main importance. She's just but, another Pokemon. But at this point, though, they can't take Jigglypuff out. I mean, they could, but... There would be blowback. From only Jigglypuff fighters. Uh, not that but, I hate Jigglypuff. She's funny to fight as. She's always funny, especially whenever you fall asleep and you put somebody basically comatose yeah. or send them flying off stage because she fell asleep. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think they would take Jigglypuff. No, I don't. Fire. No, they won't because she's been a mainstay forever. Yeah. Like, that's that's the only reason why I think she'll always be safe. Yeah. Now, now this, you now to talk about some of the other three, like the third party characters. We mentioned Gino earlier because Gino, Gino would be awesome. Mm hmm. You have also characters like Phoenix Wright. Who, like, every single Ace Attorney game has been on a Nintendo handheld. The very first game was originally on the Game Boy Advance, and then later on it was re-released for the 3DS. And the I mean, DS, not, I mean the DS. Well, then again, also on the 3DS, right. whenever everything went to right. virtual all, all the new games are on the 3DS, and then the new one is going to be on the Switch. Yeah, so, so I'm like, dude, and they've already made Phoenix a capable fighter at both Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and Project Cross Zone, too. Granted, he was a support character, but his moveset, while mostly with Barveling from Marvel vs. Capcom 3, also added a couple of different things, too, like with the Psyche Locks and stuff like that. And I think, while they could borrow elements of that, I still think they could also add different elements, like, from the games that Phoenix mm. could do. Yes, like, there's a lot that they can really mess around with, particularly because of all the different things. Like, it would be hilarious if one of his uh, attacks was grabbing a fire extinguisher and hitting someone. <laughs> now I can take somebody out with this. You know how it feels. Or the, or suddenly, his final smash is he's just standing there with somebody, and then he jumps out of the way because an oncoming car hits that person and it flies them headfirst into a pole. <laughs> or, or it would be hilarious if one of his um, his final smash was someone getting trapped and, he, uh, and he's dodging the pr a prosecutor like Francisco or... Um, Blackwell. He's using them as a meat shield. Yeah. 
or the judge comes swinging the gavel down. Yeah, like in Marvel, like it is Marvel like in Marvel Cap Capcom three, and as well as Phoenix's dream from Justice for All. But instead, it, the judge just takes out everybody yeah. except Phoenix. <laughs> Irony. But yeah, I mean, yeah, Phoenix, right? I, there's so much fun stuff you can do, and if we already have characters like Villager and We Fit Trainer, who no one. No one expected them to be fighters, or expected them to be as fun and meme-worthy as they, they actually were. They are so hilarious. Literally hours, hours after We Fit Trainer was announced, she she already had a cosplay. Like people were so excited. Everyone and everyone still loves um, We Fit Trainer, even if you she know, is so funny. Yeah. She's such a fighting clown, and Phoenix absolutely would be a fighting clown. Ooh, but speaking of Francesca, she should be an assist trophy. She should be an assist trophy. She just whips people around. It'd be great. Yeah, or if they, um... Or Simon Blackwell sends Taka out to assault people. Yeah, or... Ooh, and then they could have a stage, but it looks like the classic courtroom, and there's a case going on in the background, and but the stage has her, the speech bubbles keep smacking you. <laughs> of objection. Take that. Hold it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with um, the Ace Attorney series, just and because it's and it's and it's so well known in um, in both with America Nintendo. and Japan. Yeah, and it's pot. It's well popular. And the fact that they they're still making these games even now. Yeah. It's obviously super popular. I think about all the alternate costumes you could have. Regular Phoenix in his suit. Hobo you could, Phoenix. You could have Hobo Phoenix. You could have Feeny, College Feeny, and then you could have the. The, 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 the Tay Gray yeah. outfit. Yeah. You could also have Phoenix, like, Dual Destiny, Spirit of Justice, his new suit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's really a lot you can do with that. And I, I would just, it would be fun. I mean, and shoot, there are enough, Cap, there are other Capcom characters. And then there's in. two. And that opens up the floodgate to the fact that all these other third parties could have more than one representation. Like, he was talking about bringing back Solid Snake. Well, since Konami doesn't really have a bad relationship with Nintendo, and speaking of... Characters that have been on Nintendo consoles. Bomberman. There's that too. I didn't even consider Bomberman actually. Now that you said that, I was thinking Castlevania. Oh yeah, yeah, the Castlevania games. I was too. like, you could have Trevor, Trevver, Belmont because or... the new Netflix series they could capitalize it, or because of he's the most popular Simon of all the Belmonts, Belmont. Simon Belmont, or even Alucard, because I think Symphony Nights was on the DS. Yes. But a lot of the games they've appeared. They have games that appeared on the N64. They have games that appeared on the the Game Boy Advance. The the DS. The 3DS. Like, so, I think Castlevania would be fun. And imagine if you're a fighter with a whip, because I can't really think of any fighters that most of their movesets would be with a whip. No, really. or even someone, like, throwing the axes or something. Like, that would, I think, I think either Simon or Trevor, because they're, 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 like, because I don't play Castlevania, but I'm We're, we're mostly familiar with Trevor Belmont from the anime, specifically. But... I'm trying to start to get into it because I'm starting to watch like a bunch of history videos and Let's Plays because of thanks to the Netflix show, I now want to learn more about Castlevania. And I'm starting to learn a lot about Castlevania. Yeah. But I do think Simon is probably the one that the Castlevania fans specifically would want the most because he's the most familiar. He was the first Belmont introduced. Yeah. Even though chronologically he is not the first Belmont. The <laughs> timeline, timeline is, is kind of funny <laughs> in Castlevania. And I'm like, but, I mean, he's actually Trevor's descendant, but yeah. hey, it is what it is. But I still think it'd be cool. Plus, he does have a cool design. As one people said, even whenever he's pretty boy, Simon Belmont, he's still the most manly looking Belmont you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that, not, that would be... That but would yes, be. Bomberman would be cool. I didn't even think about that. Why didn't I even think about that? Bomberman's always, it, Bomberman is a classic character. He's been around for decades. So... I mean, I, I remember playing old school Bomberman games, and because Bomberman R was on the Switch and sold really well, and I actually played it, I bought it, I, I have a lot of fun with that game. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Bomberman made it in, because, you know, you have Pac-Man, you have Bomberman, you have Mega Man, you have Mario, and you have all these classic characters. It'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. And I was thinking of, speaking of uh, Pac-Man, Namco is another representation, so you could pull anything. You could pull a character from Tekken. I mean, they already had Heihachi as, like, a trophy for... I mean, not a trophy, as a uh, costume I mean, yeah. for a Mii fighter. So you could easily... Because even though Tekken's got other characters, honestly, the one people remember the most is Heihachi because he's ridiculous hair and his yeah. awesome fighting styles. Yeah, and I mean, he is the villain. Well, and there are also <laughs> plenty of other characters in Tekken. Like when, Well, there's Jen, there's um, uh, Zhao Yu. There's Asuka, then there's... um. Oh uh, yeah, Alicia, uh, the the the, 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 the robot girl the, the, that can take her head off. And yeah, turn into a bomb. Yeah, 
I mean, there's there's so and, much. And some of these Tekken characters have appeared thanks to Project Cross Zone. On Nintendo consoles, yeah, there are, there are a number of Tekken characters in Project Cross Zone games. So, like, it could work. And there's a lot of Namco characters that have appeared on Project Cross Zone. Yeah, and actually, now that I think about it, there was a Tekken game that was on the 3DS. Yeah, there was. So we could see a Tekken character. Or I was thinking also Cosmos. Um, she's from Xenosaga. I haven't played any of the Xenosaga games. Put at it again. I haven't played any of the Xenoblade games. I need to get on that. I'm way behind in so many video games. But I do know that Cosmos, not only did she appear in Project Cross Zone 1 and 2, she's a character that a lot of fans are familiar with in video games. Like, even though I've never played a bit, people see an image of her and immediately a lot of gamers know who she is. Uh, but she also appears as a rare blade that you can get in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And she's got like a new updated look for that game, so she does have some recent precedents. Yeah, and also you know talking about more Capcom, like I would love to see even if we don't get more Cap like Street Fighter characters, it'd be really Assist cool. Assist trophies, yeah. Like M Bison, Guile, Charlie, Jerry Han, all these other characters who are Chun Li, like all these other popular characters, even if they're just Assist Ooh, trophies. Because you know how some characters do get a really cool alternate skin where it looks identical to another character, like you got Alf for. Um, Olimar. Olimar. And then you have, like, Daisy for Peach, and then a couple other characters. Or, or like, the um, Robin well, and Corrin, you have the male and female well, looks. And then you have Bayonetta 1's look on Bayonetta. I'm like, so you could really make a new costume, like, for an alternate skin for a character. So what if, for Ryu, you have an alternate skin where he's literally just Ken? Yeah. And I mean, why not? They basically have the same moveset anyway. Yeah. You know, that, you know that, that would be really cool. Speaking of Capcom... Dante. Oh my gosh. Da Dante's in Project Cross Zone game, so that means he's been on a Nintendo console. So he would count, and then, and then, then everyone and everyone can finally utilize that meme featuring Dante from the Devil, Devil May Cry series. series. <laughs> and also, since Bayonetta's yeah, is in there, this would be the the crossover, and we know that Kamiya would be literally just a, materializing out of nowhere, and he's like, "I need to work on this game." I can just imagine there's Sakurai in his office trying to work on this game. It's late; he's getting ready to go home, and then suddenly Kamiya comes bursting through the door like the Kool Aid Man, and <laughs> they're just like, "Dante and Bayonetta in the same game." And Sakurai's <laughs> just like, "We talked about this." <laughs> No, the funny thing. There's a door. <laughs> I can see Kamiya doing that. <laughs> he just pops through the ceiling. He's like, hello, I hear you're making a game, and Dante's possibly considered. Well, and Dante would be so fun in He'd Smash. He'd be so much fun. I mean, you know, I mean, having played some of the uh, Devil May Cry games, and even in Project Cross Zone, just seeing his moveset, particularly because they like incorporating the stuff from the games, the, you know, having a juggling and our And then he's got his little guitar. Yeah. <laughs> he rocks out. Rock you know, on, baby. And all the different weapons that he gets. And you know, the, and then of course you can have you'd have Virgil as um, an assist trophy. That, or you can have Trish or Lady. Yes. Yeah. Especially yeah. Lady. Yeah. <laughs> Justice for Lady. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot you can do. I mean, but of course, you know, there's there's always one character, third party character that you can't not talk about when it comes to Smash Brothers. Travis, Travis touchdown. touchdown. Everybody's been talking about it forever. And Suda Fifty One is been begging them to put him in Smash since forever. I literally seen hashtag Travis for, for Travis touchdown for like Smash forever. I think ever since Brawl was really where that started because But like the hashtag thing I saw started ever since they announced the new Smash game for three D S and Wii U way back in two thousand thirteen. I remember seeing that hashtag going around on Twitter forever. And it still kept coming back. Every time a new reveal trailer came out, people were excited. They're like, this is great, but Travis. hashtag Travis Touchdown for Smash. I mean, granted, I've seen a lot of Sora for Smash and stuff like that, too, with other third-party characters, but a lot of people were like, Travis Touchdown. Well, in Travis Touchdown, he's... he. I mean, not not just like Bandetta or Solid Snake. It's not just that he's from a rated M game. He's from an ultra-hyper-violent rated M game. But he would fit so perfectly because he's such a quirky, fourth-wall-breaking character that he can basically acknowledge that he's in a family-friendly Nintendo game while being pissed the hell off that he can't say the F word. <laughs> Why can't I say boop? <laughs> like, yeah, like a sensor bar keeps coming over his mouth, like in Scott Pilgrim. How do you keep doing that thing with you? I'm never blah, 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 how I'm doing that with my mouth. Yeah, I mean, no, and Travis would be so fun with all the beam, the different beam katanas he can get, different moves, and even assist trophies. Gosh, assist trophies. If they got an assist trophy, it would be Shinobu. You know, she would she would be uh, the one that they would pick. or Or it would be Henry, you know, but, you know... 
Is this, you know, that, that would be so much fun to have in, in Smash. So, not a third party character, but since, you know, they would love to add more female characters, because people were saying Donkey Kong needs another character, not just him and Diddy, I say, I agree with a lot of people, Dixie! Dixie Kong needs to come in. Some people are like, she'd just be a clone of Diddy. First off, no. Have you mm -hmm. even played some of the old school Donkey Kong Country games? Like, first off, she can do cool things with her hair. Like, and second off, like, you could even borrow movesets from, like, her sister Tiny Kong. And, like, uh, Donkey Kong 64, she could do crazy things, too, like that. You could, like, reference a whole bunch of things. Heck, I would love it if, like, someone like Lanky Kong or Tiny Kong or Funky Kong. Funky would, Kong. Like, being, like, an assist trophy. Like, Donkey Kong's got so many funny characters. Oh, yeah. That I think would be great. Even like, if it's just, like, Cranky Kong. Or, like, even if they're just, like, an assist trophy or stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of funny characters you could do. I'm like, oh, but... What I'd also would really love is, uh, I was thinking of the other night about a female character that could also be added and that would be a lot of fun, and now suddenly she flew out of my head. Wait, which series? Uh, I don't remember what the video game series was, but it's because of Project Crossover. I'm thinking, oh, that would be a lot of fun if she was in it, because of Project Crossover. There's such a great crossover of all these random video game characters. Ooh, oh. but speaking of a third-party characters that have appeared on Nintendo consoles, Resident Evil. Oh. Because they've been on GameCube, they've been on N64, they've been on Wii. And I'm like, you could easily have Chris or Jill Le or Leon. Leon. Leon's the most popular. So. Leon or Claire. Like, honestly, Leon would probably be the pick. Because he's the most popular. He's the most popular. And one the game that he's really known for is Resident Evil 4, which originated on the GameCube. And then so. again on the Wii, and then on every... Like version of Xbox, every, every single co game console they could possibly run it. Run oh, it. but if it's like if it is Chris or Jill, they need to go for the Revelations looks because they specifically created Revelations for the 3DS. Yes, yes, and even if even if they're like assist trophies, like Chris and Jill together in their Revelations design, just like they are in the Project Cross Zone games, where they'd, they're... Be, they'd be so great because those are my favorite designs for Chris and Jill. They look so good in Revelations. But yes, I think Leon probably would be my Resident Evil pick if he came in. Because of Leon's just so fun. But if Chris did get it, one of his moves absolutely needs to be punching a boulder. Maybe yeah. that's his final smash, he punches a boulder. And it, and it hits the opponents and boom. <laughs> that, that would be freaking hilarious. But... Oh man. Press yeah. X to punch a boulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. There's so much that you can really do because, you know, and I don't, I don't, I didn't want to have a like just go into like some of those videos or like top fifty characters that I want. Oh, to there's so from. many characters. Yeah, I mean, there's so there are literally hundreds that they could pick from, from the most obscure video game series out yeah. there to well known games. It's just, it's impossible to really like pick all the ones that are going to be in it just because. There's just so many that you can pick from. And even the ones we picked from, like, there are more that we could talk about. But we wanted to have it at least be somewhat concise when talking about some of the characters that we would like to see. I will say, um, there's a lot of other characters I'd love to see as assist trophies, too. Yeah, assist trophies, I think, really are underrated in terms of representation of the game. It's just because, I mean, as much as I would have loved to have seen Grey Fox be playable, having Grey Fox be an assist trophy in Brawl was actually really neat. And I'd love to see, like, other characters. I mean, heck, what if we got more Sonic characters, not just Shadow as an assist I would love to see Amy and oh, Knuckles. Amy would be, honestly, my first pick, just because she could do, like, funny stuff with her hammer. Yeah. I'm like, or I could see Knuckles. He just comes in and beats people up because he's Knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Featuring Dante from Don't Make Cry and Knuckles. <laughs> 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 oh, uh. the memes. I can't wait for all the memes. I'm like, just because yeah. of the moment Smash was hyped and people were like, it's that time again! And I'm like, oh boy, the and memes. And all of a sudden everyone is playing the the me the, the, um, the hype song. Yes. With Reggie's face. Yeah. Or, <laughs> Reggie for Smash. <laughs> Let's make Reggie a character. Or, or there's that one video where they have the, um, the uh, it was with a beer commercial, but they have Sakurai's face. And he's dancing, like Sakurai's face Photoshop. Oh, you know who would technically also count? Because of... The idea of putting in a character that has to be in a video game that has to have been on a Nintendo console. Sega to Sanchiro, because he yes. has a Project Cross on 2 as an actual playable character. And he's a Sega character. Technically. Technically. Even though he was created for advertisements. That... But he was in a game, and it was on the 3DS. He was in Project Cross on 2, so... 
Oh gosh, I'm not saying none of the. It, that, of that would are, be hilarious for an assist trophy. A lot of us, we're not saying like, oh, these are things that'll happen. They're just no. like, no, these, these, this, these this, are ideas. These are not. That's not one of these videos. No. We're not gonna make predictions like, mm, I think this because I'm smart. No. Well, obviously, Cloud is going to be cut because Square Enix hates Nintendo. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is just. Most of it is some speculation at the beginning, and the rest of this all, oh, what if they did this? What if they did that? This is these are a lot of what ifs, and these are ideas that were just. Spitballing. And it's fun. It's fun to just throw ideas like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if they had this stage? Wouldn't yeah. it be cool if they had this stage? Like, there's a lot of fun stages they could do. Um, oh, they could do a Bomberman stage. Oh, that would be great because then you would have bombs on the stage that yeah. you have to dodge. Like, oh, that'd be fun. And, I mean, they could bring back a lot of fun old stages. Like, if they did bring back Snake, they absolutely need to bring back Snake's stage. Yes, Shadow Moses was well. Like, even people who didn't play Snake loved Shadow Moses. It's so weird how popular that stage was. It was a really popular stage. I did like it a lot. But I would also love it if they did bring another stage in from yeah. Metal Gear Solid. Just because, uh, hey, look, it's, it's Snake back with multiple stages. Because, man, there are some, I mean, not just Shadow Moses, but some of the, even the tanker from uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 is actually a neat location. You have the, the jungles and all the, the, um, the Grozny Grad from Metal Gear Solid 3, and, and you don't really know much about. It's okay. Yeah. You're excited. That's yeah. all that matters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot they can do, and I would really love to see, particularly for Metal Gear Solid 3, since 3 was on the 3DS, which, on, as a side note, they really need to port that to the Switch. So that you have port all everything of, to the switch. Yeah, so that you have Metal Gear Solid 3's updated controls in proper graphics. Oh, I forgot another um, third-party character they need to add because uh, Ubisoft made a trophy of him for Nintendo. Rayman. Ray Man. Yes. Like, I mean, I've never played a Rayman game, but I know he was another really popularly requested character. Yes, and I would love to see Rayman come back because he hasn't really gotten much love at all. And since you know Ubisoft made that model for a trophy for Nintendo to put in the game like that's actually really sweet and Ubisoft has always had a good relationship with Nintendo. Yeah. even when Nintendo went through their awkward years and like everybody was kind of turning their backs on Nintendo not Ubisoft Ubisoft always had a good relationship with them even if they weren't putting all their games on the on the system they weren't they still had some relationship with well, it. They, they, think, always, think, they always showed their support in Nintendo, and they always like complimented Nintendo, and the developers always had like well, good relationships well, with and even, Nintendo. Well, um, even um, re even the the Mario plus Rabbids um, Battle King, or Kingdom Battle game yeah. was co-developed with well, Nintendo. And the CEO Ubisoft. of Ubisoft has always had good relationships with like Reggie and all of them too. Right. So I mean. The, it, you know, Raymond coming in would be another classic character a lot of people really wanted. And because, you know, the the, the Origins and Legends, you know, games yeah. have done, did pretty well. So, that, you know, it would be nice to see that in, in as another character. It's like, shoot, you could, they could easily put 10, 15 new characters in this game. Oh, they could. And it would be an already, if you just build from already the roster you have from 3DS and Wii, which is already perfect roster, just bring back the Ice Climbers and Wolf and Snake, and then... A whole bunch of new characters. Right. Like imagine, like, like that's an honest estimate. Just ten. Like even if it was just ten, that'd be freaking amazing. Right. Be and because since they, if going by the idea that they've already built from the Wii U version, you would already have all the other characters. Which is practically complete roster with plus the DLC. But then all the DLC characters is part of the new roster. Right. So you just you start with that and, and build imagine from there. how huge then that would be if they keep adding more characters. Like that would probably be the biggest. Like roster of characters in a fighting game you've ever seen. Oh, I mean, it, I would love to see if they just they just hit a huge like. Like, like just imagine if they added twenty characters. They just said, "Hey, let's go for broke and just boom." I would. I mean, I would love it if they did. Particularly if they, you know, they would have a lot of if they built it up, then they would already have a lot of time to focus on new characters instead of having to rebuild every character from the ground up. Yeah. So that would be really cool. Like, I I really think they're going to go all out with this Smash Brothers. Like. I think that they're making it clear that this isn't just going to be a port. It's not just going to be. It'll be a very beautiful port if it yeah. was, though. Yeah, no, they're 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 putting forth the effort to make this a game, and I think they're the the trailer. But with I the don't Inglings, think it's going to be a one hundred percent new game. No, no, either. no. Obviously, like I said, I think it's going to be built off of the engine that they're enhancing and, and it, making it, it first Switch. off, it would save them so much time, and the more time it saves them, that means the more characters and stages they can create for us. Yes, more modes and, and more stuff. assist trophies and. More time for them is only but good for us, the gamers. Yeah. And then they'll they'll be able to make more characters and put it in the game. Oh gosh, because like... we've been talking about this forever yeah. because of we're huge Zelda fans. I'm like, what they really need to do is 
They need to add another Zelda character. One one of the characters is that a character that represents something. Because in every Zelda, nearly every Zelda game, there's always a Link, a Ganon, and a Zelda. I'm like, but there's another character who's almost been in almost every Zelda game, too. And that's Impa. And I'm like, and she's... First off, because people were saying, how would you even make Impa playable? Well, first off, there's things she could do in Skyward Sword. And it was even things. Hyrule where, Warriors. Well, yeah, but Hyrule Warriors even pushed it even more in the forefront. But even from just Skyward Sword and Ocarina of Time, you could tie in things to her sage powers and the fact that she's a Sheikah. And that she's a gosh darn ninja. I know, she's a freaking <laughs> ninja. Like, you could have tied in, like, people you were so uncreative who were saying that there's no way Impa can be a character. But now that Hyrule Warriors is a thing, you absolutely have so much to pull Impa from. She's got the freaking giant sword. She's got the Nagi Nada thing that, yes. that can create, like, fire. I'm um, like, there's so much you can do with Impa, and you could make her design, like, you could easily, like, do an update of her design from, like, Skyward Sword, I think, to have her main look, because honestly, that's one of my favorite designs of Impa. And you incorporate stuff from, like, uh, but Hyrule you, Warriors. But you have a skin and... from Hyrule Warriors, and then you have a skin based on Ocarina of Time, and I think it'd be perfect. And then you could do different color variations. Right, and, and if they aren't, if they can create a moveset for Sheik... Yeah. Then they can create a move. She, and like people who say it's so uncreative, Sheik literally did nothing but give Link clues and play a harp. If they can create stuff for Sheik, they can create stuff for Empa. Yeah. <laughs> and it wouldn't even be all that bad if they had similarities because hey, that I mean, makes sense you know, because Impa trained Zelda. Zelda. And you know, she's an actual Sheik and she would like Sheikah, like she represents the Sheikah tribe, like who are this elusive tribe. And thanks to Breath of the Wild, we finally get to see the Sheikah tribe. Yeah. Yes, that was one of my favorite things of Breath of the Wild. So I mean, but yeah, we love to have Impa in the game. Like, but another important thing from Zelda is usually the sidekick character. There's always so many different sidekick characters, but of course the most popular, and I'm still going to always say this, Glinda. Yeah. I know she's just his trophy, and it's probably never going to happen, but if, like, you know, a sidekick rep happened, it would have to be Midna, because she is the most popular. The only one after her, I would probably say, is, well, there's Zelda from Spirit Track there, herself, because there, she did the Phantom, but then again, fee. that would... That well, the Fee is also extremely popular in Japan. I'm like, or there's the King of the Red Lions, and he, both... Him and Fee are playable in Hyrule Warriors. Yes. I'm like, so you could do something with them. And I was like, but Midna is by far the most popular. Yeah, if they had to pick any of the sidekick characters, it would be Midna. And you could do either, it could be true for Midna, because she's got her own cool move set from Hyrule Wars that you can pull for. Or, and Hyrule Wars really pull a lot. Or right. what you do is, you do uh, Imp more Midna, and then, but instead, like, make it, like, duality thing, like, kind of like with the Ice Climbers, where it's her and Wolf Link, and you can pull some of her moveset from Hyrule Warriors, but you can also pull things from Twilight Princess, like how sometimes Wolf Link attacks and she's on him, and, like, they can do a move, like, you know, how Link does his little spin attack, and I'm like, instead it's Midna, and then the whole field, like, does the thing, and her hair's up, and then they both do their own spin attack. Right, and of, I think it could be cool. and of course, Final Smash would be the Fused Shadows. Yes, if it's in Midna, it'd be the Fused Shadows. If it's true for Midna... It'd be breaking the Mirror of Twilight, because... Like they, they did in Hyrule Warriors and Broke My Heart. Yeah, they have to shatter everyone's heart, just like the Mirror. That, or probably something with those light sources, you know, the yeah. souls. Like, she probably could do something like that, if it's true for Midna. Right, and, and true for Midna has so many cool moves in Hyrule Warriors. Well, yeah, or she could do stuff with the Mirror Twilight, like how she kept summoning things. Like how she would summon the bridge out of nowhere, and then she'd like whack you around with it. Yeah. And like she just randomly kept summoning things. Like she summoned the one cannon that shot Link into the sky to shoot people with. And Warriors, like her moveset is absolutely insane. And then she can create giant forms of like the Wolf Link that she can ride to like stampede people. And just ah oh, gosh, they really had way so like way too much fun with Midna. Yeah. And speaking of high rewards, <laughs> you could have like an assist trophy be like Lana, and like Lana could I would do love some to fun stuff. Because Lana. Lana would be the perfect representation of high rewards. Yeah, she's no a very popular, unique. She's a new character from that game. Like specifically to the game that, or you'd probably do one of the bosses though. Sia might be a little risque. <laughs> but um, the the dragon guy, I forgot when. Oh, Vol Volga. Volga. Because he's based on the Volga. Yeah, I know. A lot, I know a lot of people like him. Yeah, he is really cool, and he's got a cool design. So I think he could also be fun too. But people were saying we need more villain reps. Was there any characters from like villains of any video games that you think could also possibly be fun to play as? Besides, you know, Ganondorf. And, yeah. Um. And uh, Bowser. 
Well, going from, like, I would think for Street Fighter, you have M. Bison and Jerry Han. Oh, M. Bison, honestly, would be so much fun if he was put yeah, in. Yeah, um, you know, if we bring in Resident Evil, Wesker's. Wesker always, would be I crazy. love freaking love Wesker's. I, I especially love playing him in um, the Mercenaries mode in Resident Evil 4. And he's a lot of fun to play as in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Which, why did you cut him? Anyways, that's not here. Yeah. Yeah, um, villain characters, it's... Wolf technically. Wolf technically is a villain. Um, kind of rival. Yeah, I mean, if talking about Dante having Virgil in, as long as he's not overpowered. But you know, <laughs> Virgil is really cool. I know a lot of people freaking love Virgil. They if they brought in new characters from new series, it's like duos. It's like you would have you bring in Dante as a character, and you also bring in Virgil as a character. You bring in Leon as a character, and you also bring in Wesker as a character. It was like, I mean, that would be cool. But I'm... There's a lot of, like... I mean, I understand people want villain reps, and yeah, and I'm like, but I'm having trouble thinking who would fit well in Smash. Because yeah. of... Yeah, I mean... Also, I think Ganondorf's moveset needs to be updated, too. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't talk about some of the updates that they should do. I want to, like... I like the fact that they started with Brawl making updates to, you know, Ganondorf's moveset, but I want them to really go the whole nine yards. Like, they made a lot of, like, even subtle changes. Like, instead of the, the, um, the shoulder, he has the... Oh, with the, the yeah, kick. But, and I'm like, but he's not really a brawler. He's a sorcerer. Yeah. Having some magic attacks, and it, even if it... Oh, it would be cool for his, his final smash was using the, the swords of the six sages. He could, or that could be one of his attacks. But I do like how he turns into a beast cannon, but what if instead... He's still, like, done, like, looking, because, honestly, Twilight Princess Ganon is really an iconic look. But what if instead he transforms into Calamity Ganon? Ooh, that would be, that would be great. And it would be um, a great way to update him for the, you know, the modern games, because they're making Link look like Breath of the Wild Link. Which I don't think they're completely changing it 100%, because people no. think he's going to be right-handed. No, because of then, he's going to feel different. I'm sorry, yes, I know, I know. It's, it's like, but it'd be the same moves. But there's there's a difference. Like, you'll just feel it. You know it if you've played, like, because I'm a Link main. I know I would feel a difference. Because there's a difference playing, because I've even, even though I didn't get far in it because it felt too weird for me, because I always played GameCube Twilight Princess. But there's a difference playing, like... The Wii, Wii version of Twilight Princess and the GameCube version. I mean, granted, one is motion controls, and the motion controls are weird in general. But it's just, it feels weird to me. I mean, I guess a better way to say it is going from playing Twilight Princess to playing Breath of the Wild, even though, yes, both are wildly different games. But when you attack somebody, it's just, it's strange to see Link right-handed, and it feels weird for Link being right-handed. Right. And I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people saying that Link is going to be completely changed. Like, no. Like, guys, it... He's one of the classic characters. He's been this way since the 64 game. Why would you... I mean, granted, they added, started, you know, those side smash attacks and the side B attacks. And they started, you know, they made minor tweaks depending on the, you know. I mean, game. I know in the Wii U version, he's basically his Twilight Princess design, but they gave him the color palette of Skyward Sword. Yeah, the most... And they even had his, like, in the air up, um, up A attack or his up smash attack. But if he's in midair, he does the Skyward Strike pose, but it's still the same attack. But he's his just he's doing a different pose while doing the attack. Rather than being on the side doing like this, he's doing like, and his legs are like all wide and stuff like that. Like like um, the box art of Skyward Sword. He's trying to look more like that, but he's left-handed doing it. Because yeah. of, m people most commonly associate Link being left-handed, because he's one of the few video game characters that are. It kind of makes him stand out a bit, even if it is a minor thing. Yeah. But it is Link's thing. He's left-handed. Keep him left-handed, please. I like that about Link. I know it's a, a weird thing to get hung up about, but... Yeah, I mean, I I don't think they're going to make changes. Like we said, like we mentioned before with Mario and Cappy, like, they're going to... I think they'll make some changes, but they'll be, for especially established characters, they're only going to be fairly minor. And maybe some of the clone characters, like Lucina, might get some changes, but, like, they'll keep Lucina, because Lucina is wildly she's popular. She's so popular. Lucina is, let's see, besides Fire Emblem Awakening, she's got a DLC amiibo for Fire Emblem Fade. She's got a DLC amiibo for, for Code, Code Name, Name Steam. Steam. She's appeared multiple times in Fire Emblem Heroes. Like, she, she, she's, she's, got, she's different summon characters. She's been in Project Cross, Cross Zone 2. Like, Lucina's extremely popular. Like, she's very, very popular. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 can, I can see them altering and, and, her moveset a little bit. And, and Robin is very distinct. He's not going to get Robin cut. is distinct. Coin is distinct. Everyone's whining about, oh, why are there so many Fire Emblem characters? But okay, but I'm sorry if a Japanese company is putting in characters from a very popular game 
in Japan. Well, and especially because the new games re resurrected the Fire Emblem well, yeah. franchise. Fire Emblem Awakening saved the franchise, and Fire Emblem Fates is extremely popular in Japan. Right, and Corrin, like, people wind up Corrin and Robin. Corrin and Robin, they're, so they're distinct. distinct. Like, regardless of whether you like the characters or not, I honestly found, I, even if I don't have as much fun playing them, well, there are people who do, and it would be dumb to take these also, new characters. Also, Corrin's got a chainsaw sword. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a chainsaw sword? And Corrin can turn into a dragon. That's different. Corrin's got... Yeah. And will partially turn into a dragon as his and her moves. And also, yes, the fact that they have Robin and Corrin both do, like, oh, yes, because they're avatars, so you could either do the male version or the female version. That's yeah. different, too. And I'm like, and Roy, of course, had to come back because Roy was... Roy is our boy. Roy is, like, a very popular character from Melee, and they at least tweaked him a bit to feel slightly more different, so he's not 100% a clone. And Ike yeah. has always been different, which is kind of ironic, because people were always assuming it would just be two Fire Emblem characters. Like, it'd be, always be Marth, and then some other characters. So they had Roy, and then they replaced Roy with Ike and Brawl. Then people were always assuming that Ike was going to be replaced with Krom, and then Ike's here, and then Krom. Krom, Krom. Krom got deconfirmed <laughs> via punch by Captain Falcon. Captain Falcon. Falcon. <laughs> punched him so hard he got deconfirmed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do think that I think Crom will probably make it in as like an assist trophy, but I don't. Well, think... Well, no, I think Crom might stay as a final smash, but I do think maybe some more characters could possibly appear as assist trophy. Like at the very least, the newest um, game Echoes, it might have the oh, what's her name? She's got the pink hair. Um. I don't know. I haven't played that game. I know who you're talking about. Because I know she's also in Warriors as well. But right. Yeah, so I'm thinking because she is the more popular of the two main heroes. Because there's the green hair guy. I haven't played Echoes yet. He got it for me as a gift. And it's sitting on my backlog of so many games that I'm way behind on. Because of, there's so many games that I need to complete. Because there's the green hair guy. And then there's the... Oh, Cecilia. Celica. Se so, something like that. Yes. I knew it started with a C. Yeah, her. I know out of the two, she's the most popular one, because yeah. that's why she appeared in Warriors. And they'd be they'd be looking to have a female representative, so... <laughs> or they could put in What's-His-Face from um, Warriors. Not the, not one of the twins. The guy who is actually voiced by Xander Mobis. Oh, um, Darius. Yes, Darius. That's his name. Bay. He's so attractive. <laughs> well, it'd be, it'd be hilarious, because they already have him. They Xander already have Mo him as is the narrator, so why not? He's an assist so, trophy. So, yeah, here's an assist trophy. So you're also going to be voicing everything and this guy. And this guy. It'd be great. <laughs> I, it would be funny, because then he could also be like, hey, even though he's not a playable character, this is your Fire Emblem Warriors representative. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, I mean, that, that would be really, really neat to have. But, you know, again, you know, there's so many characters. There's so many characters. And a lot of people are suspecting so they might add a character from the um, the new one, the new Switch one that's going to come out. That's true, or even as an assist trophy. So who knows? I mean, the possibility is endless because of the fact that Fire Emblem is so hot right now in Japan. But people forget. They keep adding characters for sometimes for the sake. Like, J the Japanese audiences were so confused why Little Mac was included. But the sole reason Sakurai put him in is because a punch out is very popular in America. He because boxing is obviously more popular. And, yeah. and so even though he's not played really much in Japan, a lot of American fans play him and they love Little Mac and that's why he was included. The Little Mac is fun. He's different and he's fun. <laughs> and so, like, so sometimes he will put a certain character in. While it may confuse you, it will not confuse somebody else on the other side of the world if they're very popular right. there. It's the reason why, as much as I can't stand him, Tingle is in Hyrule Warriors because of he's huge in Japan. No, I, I don't think that they would put Tingle in Smash. But he I, is an assist trophy. He is an assist trophy. I think he's good as that. He I would can, can, I would like Tingle to stay as an assist trophy. Please stay as that. You're a very strange, strange little man in your skin-tight suit. Ugh. I get unclean thinking about Tingle, and also he ripped me off so much in Wind Waker. Ugh. Thank, thank goodness for for HD, and we didn't have to see him as much. Yeah. But, but off yeah. the subject of Tangle, but there's a lot of characters to do. Heck, Bayonetta is solely in because of a popularity contest. Right. And now she's a, she's more or less a Nintendo character at this point. She's more or less a second party Nintendo character. It's so funny. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I saw some people actually claiming that Bayonetta will be cut. Like, why? Why? Like, Nintendo has more than capitalized on the fact that they bought rights to, the, you know, to Why would they Bayonetta. cut her after Bayonetta 2 and 1 recently had been ported to the Switch and they announced Bayonetta 3? Honestly, that would be the dumbest thing ever. Right. Why? Because if some of you people are salty at how OP she is, or they could just work on balancing her more yeah, for the like, next game. Yeah, like, they'll balance her. The, that, obviously, that's going to be one of the changes they make. They're going to, especially with new characters, they're going to have to change some balancing, making sure some characters are a little bit better, some make nerf a little bit of some of the abilities. I mean, her... 
her witch time actually was pretty balanced as I did like how they balanced her out on the witch time so that way that wasn't too overpowered what should be nerfed is her freaking recovery because that is insane that she can double jump witch twist and then double jump after it because usually as all characters you double jump and then you can do your up B move recovery and but then you know then they do that thing where they can't and they just fall after that no not Bayonetta <laughs> They know it was OP. Which is they should, <laughs> at the very least, they should nerf her recovery to where it's the same as everybody else's. I mean, I love playing as Bayonetta. She is so much fun. It's the reason why I got into the Bayonetta games. Yeah. Like, yeah, Bayonetta and Smash is why I ended up playing Bayonetta in the first place. And I got it the 1 and 2 for the Switch. Oh, so much fun. <laughs> so good. She has to come back. If she doesn't, then honestly, the Nintendo would be making the greatest mistake ever. Yeah. Which they wouldn't, because Nintendo are not fools. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I wish there was another character I could remember, because there was somebody on the tip of my tongue, and I can't remember them. Just, oh. Uh. Can you think about anything to describe them? No. No. But they do need more villain characters. And I yeah. mean, Nintendo villain characters. I never understood the appeal of the Crocodile King are cool, or whatever his K name is. King K. Rule? K. Rule, that's yeah. what it was. I don't know. He wasn't really my favorite Donkey Kong villain. No. I don't understand the appeal, but whatever. I guess because people want more villains, and Donkey Kong Country is a classic old school game. Well, I mean, though we, as long as they can squeeze in a few other villains, like I would love to see like M. Bison available as a. What they could do, speaking of Nintendo, though, they could put in something representing Paper Mario, so they could easily have um, like a. Uh, my favorite is the villain, the Shadow Queen lady that possesses Peach at the end of Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Like, because she's got her own, like, Eldrick Abomination form. Like, so it would be cool. Or you could have the evil Paper Princess Peach, and it's like, you know, the Shadow Queen possessing Peach. And so really it's evil Peach, but she's, you know, Paper. That would, that would actually be hilarious. Or even Paper Mario would be funny as a playable character. Or as an assist trophy. I would yeah. love Paper Mario as an assist trophy. That'd be kind of fun. I'm like, mm. or any of the characters, or... or I don't know, like, there's so many characters you could do from a lot of Nintendo games. Or, like, the little evil robot Octolings. That, yeah. that could be a playable character. Like, the ones, for, especially for the trailer. Like, oh, man. That trailer. That trailer was so hype. I thought that, that nothing could top that. And then suddenly Inkling looks up and the Smash logo in her eye. Instant meme. Instant meme. Just, but yeah, and, oh, and, and of course that just spurred the all the excitement. Like I don't think I felt that excited. Like I forgot how exciting it was to be hyped for a Smash game. I mean, you always will remember. I will go back and watch reaction videos, and it's always fun. And I'm like, ah, oh, wasn't that a fun time? Nothing still will ever top out my freak out of Mega Man being announced. Oh, I remember that. I it was remember 2013. I was in my room at my apartment at college. <laughs> I was going crazy, best me going tumbled. I was like. Ah! My roommate freaked out because she heard me screaming. She's like, what's going on? And I'm just like, Mega Man's in Smash! Mega Man's in Smash! And she's never played a video game in her life. She's just like, no, okay, I have no idea what you're talking about. She just shut the door and walked away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember you were ranting at me about that, like, oh my gosh! And then, of course, when I saw the final Smash, and that, that even topped my earlier freak out for previous, but after when I saw Mega Man in Smash. Oh, that was awesome. That was amazing. Beautiful. Mm. Man, I'm just, I'm so hyped to ready and get new announcements for Smash Brothers Oh, E3. gosh, Microsoft and Sony are probably sweating because of Smash Brothers. I mean, at the very least, both Microsoft and Sony know they can announce about Kingdom Hearts 3 news. Yeah. They, they could bank on that, but then the moment Smash was announced, they were like, F. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm hoping for Kingdom Hearts for, for Switch anyway, so. Because they said they were, they were thinking about it. Like, yeah. Uh, Nomura did not deny a possibility of it happening. He just said he wanted to get main development done before they ported it, but that doesn't, he didn't say anything about He porting. didn't say no, it could never happen. He just said, not I, yet. He, he just said, I would have to finish it first, you know, for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 before I even, like, even consider doing that. But yeah. And I'm like, that wasn't a no. And just pour 1.5 and 2.5 and then 2.8 over to the Switch just in the meantime. All of the Kingdom Hearts games yeah. on one Switch. Yeah, but you know, we'll have to wait to see announcements. But 
But that's neither here nor there about Smash. Yeah, so. But, oh, there's so many possibilities with Smash Brothers. I can't wait. There's, like, I mean, now we're going to see a plethora of videos of people about doing Smash Brothers speculations of what characters they think. Oh, I've already been with. seeing the last several weeks. I've been seeing a lot of, like. And it's fun. Like, even though, even though there's always people I'm always going to disagree with on a lot of their choices, it is still fun hearing all of you guys' views. Like, yeah. even though I can't understand the hype about, like, Donkey Kong villain. Crocodile Man. K. Rule. Yes, that's right, K. Rule. <laughs> or Ridley. Ridley is great as a stage hazard. I like him in that. It's... And I loved him as a boss. Oh, and I love him as a boss. I would love to see him as a boss again. If they did another story mode again. And and that really opens the door for also more characters showing up, even if they can't be playable. Like, at the yeah. very least, you could still fight them. But, I mean, even though I don't understand some of y'all's choices, <sighs> it's fun to see how much... As a community, we all really love Everyone Smash Brothers. Everyone gets hyped Brothers. for Smash, like and like, and how excited we be, and we put up our list. And sure, we know maybe only one person or even none of them at all are going to show up on that list. But it's still fun to talk about, to it's, engage, it's still fun to get to hyped theorize, over. and it's exciting, and it's an exciting time. It just, I didn't expect so soon I would no. be hearing this. Well, especially when you saw at the end of the trailer, 2018, it was like. <laughs> Like I was literally, I was watching, I was watching a stream of the direct. I was freaking out. I was actually watching, um, because I follow this guy on YouTube. It's like PK Spark, something like that. He's got a bunch of X's in it, whatever. And he was streaming it, and I just barely got off work. But I rewinded it all the way to like the beginning, and so I was just watching the direct, and I was driving home. But thankfully, most of it wasn't really exciting stuff. I mean, it was. I'm like, oh, that's neat. Oh, that's neat. Oh, cool. Release date for. The Hyrule Warriors port, cool. And I'm like, oh, that's neat. And then I saw, like, Insane Trilogy. And I'm just like, oh, Tim's probably going to freak out about that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, that's neat. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then and then whenever I was, like, pretty much home, so thankfully I was in a neighborhood, so I'm just like, oh, wow, Splatoon stuff. I'm like, oh, that looks cool, that looks cool. And then the Octane Trailer, I'm like, whoa! And I'm like, okay, that is so hype. And I'm like... This is the big news. And I didn't expect that we'd get anything more than that. Oh, 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 Nintendo's Ooh. like, you fool. In the Smash. Thankfully, I managed to pull up right into my driveway and park right as they started to do that trailer. Because I'm literally not even kidding. I immediately put the car in park right as the inkling turned around. And then suddenly I saw her silhouette. Because thank goodness I was parked. Because I was flailing. And that would be so dangerous while I'm driving. I mean, I wasn't really looking at the screen. I would just occasionally glance down. Because, you know, keep your eyes on the road. And I figured, it's a March Direct. It's probably going to be nothing yeah. too big. Not, not, especially not before a couple months before E3. E3. No, I figured it's probably going to be mostly just a lot of small stuff like, oh, here's more eShop stuff. Here's more here's more of this. Virtual console 3DS. Like, I figured it would be small things. Or maybe they would just be confirming release dates on some upcoming games. Like, like I Warriors. I figured and I was right about that. I'm like, oh, yep, release date. Predicted that. I didn't think it'd be anything too huge. I figured there may be one big thing. But I assumed... It wasn't going to be anything too big. And granted, I did think the Octoling thing was huge for me because I love Splatoon too, but I didn't think it'd be anything that gigantic. I thought there is no way they would announce Smash so early. I figured they're going to wait for E3. That way, at E3, Sony and Microsoft are going to sit there all comfortable and thinking that they'll totally win this year, and then Nintendo's just like, Smash Brothers, and then they'll just be like, F. <laughs> Because the yeah. moment you drop Smash Brothers, you instantly win E3. And I yeah, was like, but... And, and now they've developed a, a, a consistently running hype train all the way to E3. And now, though, but the hype is going to be so insane. And now Sony and Microsoft are going to be like, crap, we have to really make sure to up our game to be awesome this year. Because I'm sorry, it's Smash Brothers. And Smash Brothers releasing this year. Like... They're not only just announcing another game, it's a game coming out this year, and it's a big one. Like, Smash Brothers is one of their biggest money makers. It's huge. Everybody loves Smash Brothers. How can you not? It's yeah. all these characters coming together to beat so the fun. crap out of each other. <laughs> it's just so much fun. I can't wait. I can't wait for June this year. I mean, not only because we're finally going to get the actual release date of Kingdom Hearts 3. Finally. <laughs> I know it's this year. They just they just won't tell us. Although I'm telling you right then and there, if they say and the release date is literally next month, I am telling you I will keel over right then and there, like on the ground. I will die before the game even comes out, and it will be unfortunate. But I'll be so excited, my heart will stop. You, you waited all this time only to die. <laughs> only to die. <laughs> then be literally the story of a Kingdom Hearts fan life. Three is right around the corner, and then we die from the excitement. <laughs> 
It'll yeah. be the same with Smash Brothers. I'll be like, Smash, and then just heart attack, dead. Don't worry, Aaron. I will play Smash Brothers in your honor. Rude. I want to play Smash Brothers in my honor. <laughs> Ooh, predictions on a possible release date for this year. What do you think? Um, I don't. Like a lot of people have been speculating for like September around or around the time when they launch the online. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are like a lot of people are expecting they're going to do what Hay what Halo Two did for Xbox Live, mm -hmm. and they're going to have okay, we're here's our online service, and here's a game that everyone wants to play. So I think I think they're either going to do it either at the launch or a little bit afterwards because they have plenty of other online games to to support having that for Splatoon, Mario Kart, Mario Aces, Arms, Arms, and so, now Dark Souls, Dark, Dark Souls, and then other games that have any sort of online features. They're going to have that support, and then they have Smash Brothers come in as their big heavy hitter because everyone's going to want to play Smash. Everyone's going to want to get the online. I predict it'll probably be more closer to winter, just like with Wii U because of holiday season, that's always the biggest buck, especially Black Friday, you know that's when everyone's going to be clamoring, or for the Cyber Monday, especially Cyber Monday. Like, everybody's going to be hitting Amazon so hard that your computer will probably explode. Mm. I mean, while I could see it for that, but I do think with all the other games that are coming out at that time, I feel like that'll be the good testing ground to see how well their new online services work before you put in the big guns in because what if the testing services don't work as well yeah and what i know they're definitely going to be because they did they did it with arms they did it with splatoon they're doing they did it with um they're going to be doing it with mario aces so they're going they're, they're going to have a smash test for, like they, they're probably going to do a several of those before the online because they, just to test they, they it need it sure provide proof because if it backfires you don't want it to backfire for Smash. Well, you can have it backfire for other things, but not for Smash Bros. Particularly because they've always had trouble with the online, so they want to make sure that that is solid. So they'll they'll do a handful of, they'll probably have a, they'll do what they did with like the, you remember the 3DS demo for Smash? Yes. And you had like, I think it was like 10 or so characters that you can choose And they'll from. probably be testing at E3, because I know there is going to be a tournament this year at E3. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah, they're going to be testing it. They're, they've probably been rigorously testing it. They're going to do a, a test Smash. And I mean, because the online competitive scene for a lot of fighting games are always big. So, you know, they want to make that really good because Nintendo really cares about making it good for us. Right. They treat us so well. Right, and they've been really they've been really aiming to make their online a lot better. And, you know, Mario Kart is smooth. A Splatoon is smooth. I rarely have any online issues with those games. I maybe have, like, a f drop, like, like, oh, drop out of a match, maybe. But that was only because there was some schmuck who had a really terrible connection. But it's just like, but that rarely happens. It'll happen maybe once. And it's someone that in you were connecting to in Japan or something on the other side. It'll of the happen world. once in a while. Like it's not very common. Yeah. Like I had that maybe happen at least three times a day if I was playing, like say in Splatfest, like on the first game, and then in the recent Splatfest, it only happened to be once in the entire like three days I was playing a, spl a Splatfest. So, or not three days, two days, whatever. You yeah. know what I mean. <sighs> yeah, so. But yeah, you know, they, they've, they're they working on it, and they're going to make sure. And honestly, I'll be excited to play the test smash whenever they end up getting around to doing that. Because they're probably going to be doing that a couple months before the game releases. Oh, there's just so much to talk about. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we could go on forever about speculative. No, but yeah, but I think we're, I think we basically talked about all the stuff we wanted to talk about. It's going to be so much fun, guys. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. This is a great time to be a Smash fan. And, yeah, and I hope uh, I kind of want to do more videos, especially when we get more information from you. Oh, E3. gosh. Maybe, like, um, we can do, like, post reactions. Mm. Like, not, like, an actual live reactions, because I know with our schedules that probably wouldn't work. Yeah. But we could be like, so this trailer came out. We both saw it, and here's our thoughts. Like, that'd yeah. be kind of fun. Would, we, could, we could call it the Smash Retrospective. Yeah. <laughs> or something. A retrospective of something that happened yesterday. <laughs> Well, yes. You can be nostalgic for something that well, happened yeah. even five minutes ago. Yeah, and then we'll have the, the E3 announcements, and we know they're going to have a Smash Direct. That's probably going to happen right... Well, can, can you imagine, though? I bet you anything. They're going to show a fun little trailer for Smash, and it'll be awesome. It'll blow everyone's mind. And then at the end of the trailer, and this is one of going to be one of my predictions, and I hope it comes true, it'll say, tune in and this date, blah, blah, blah. Maybe, maybe July or, or August for Smash Direct or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Like, they're gonna build the keep building the hype and then all the other gaming companies will just again be like F. <laughs> <laughs> dang it nintendo always proving why you were the king of the world yeah. why do you think they've been in this game so long since the 1800s yeah since the literally 
They were a card game company. And then they did her into video games eventually when that became a thing. Yeah. I would like mm -hmm. to get some card games from Nintendo yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. But that? I mean, they outlived Sega and all the others. Yeah. They're still around. People keep thinking that, oh, Nintendo just to just sell to like either Microsoft or Sony. Mm. Why? They're, they are hot right now. Yeah, they're smoking hot with the Switch. The Switch is selling like hotcakes. The, the Switch already beat out the... Um, the PS4. Oh, yeah, the PS4 records, and it already beat out the Wii U in a single year. They beat out the it Wii U lifetime like sales. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, and especially since so many different uh, Japanese companies are already pledging to have all of their games on the Switch now. It's like... So many people are, mm -hmm. like, like, hopping on that, and they want to hop on that. So, yeah, I mean, this is big, and so, yeah, I mean, I really want to... It's really... We really need to do I this think, again. I can't for, remember who, but one of the developers of Sony said, we rightly should always see Nintendo as a worthy competition yeah. because they like because after they saw like the release of the Switch they were like this this console is going to be hot and they predicted it and I'm like that Sony executive or dev or whoever they were I can't remember their name but they predicted it correctly Nintendo's hot yeah <laughs> smoking yeah so. but anyways that's yeah. what rambling yeah that's what rambling <laughs> So ho hopefully we'll come around and do this again when we get more information on Smash so we can talk about it. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Smash Brothers. Why isn't it June yet? I want E3 now. Yeah. Now we still have to wait a few months. Oh, it's so close and yet so far. Well, I think that's about it for this one. I think that's so, yeah. about it. So, thank you for watching. <laughs> Sayonara.